Good evening, section crew, and welcome to the second section podcast. I'm your host, Andy Dorsch, and tonight uh, with me is my co-host, Mike Ostertag. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing great. That Sorry, intro never gets old. It never gets I, it, old. I get I giggle every time I see that the logo yeah. come out of that that baggage car window. That's just <laughs> yeah, it just makes me laugh. It's it's good, and and I want to apologize to the section crew right off the start for the delay. Uh, the Greasy Meat Hands ba- uh, band was out back. They were they didn't get fed this week, so uh, we had to we had to bring in the buffet for them. So they're out back having a sandwich right now, but. Um, we're, we're getting rolling here and we have a, we have a special treat for the section crew tonight. We have Boomer dioramas with us. Boomer, welcome to the second section podcast. How you doing? Uh, oh, good, you... Yeah. good, good. I'm glad you could join us this evening. So Boomer, would you be so kind as to, uh, just give a little bit of an introduction to yourself, to the audience here tonight? And then we'll get rocking and rolling. Yeah, okay, sure. There's a little bit of an echo there. Eh? Is bit, there? There's like a dual track echo. I think it's gone now. Okay. I'm I'm not hearing much on my end. Mike, are you getting an echo? No. No. Okay. Yeah. So just a just a bit of the echo here. Um we got just one second. Let me just check this Wi-Fi. Just a second. I had to <laughs> there he goes. Change. He's gone. That's it. Good night. <laughs> Mini <laughs> Prince is saying that they're all good. No echo here. Um, but if, I can I can understand it'd be a bit uh, odd having to listen to yourself twice in the show. I'm tonight. getting it. Yeah. Yeah, so we had a bit of a technical difficulty there, but uh, I had to jump to this cheaper computer. So I don't know if it's really... See, now it's repeating. Oh, is it? Because it sounds like uh, from from what we hear out on out on the world, everyone everyone says you're coming in just fine, so it must be on your headphones. So the the... The Greasy Meat Hands band probably had something to do with this in, in the background here. Um, but anyways, so while we're while we're getting that sorted, um, before we give Boomer's introduction here, I do want to give a shout out to the chat tonight. Um, we have 112 members out there in the chat. Um, and it's, it's uh, oh, geez, up to 113 now. Um, so welcome everyone. I won't uh, do the normal deal tonight um, where we go through each and every one of you that are here this evening. However, um, I want I you to do it. Okay, fine. We're going to do it. Okay, I want you to do it. Uh, yeah, does okay, that sound better? Fix. You got it fixed, and, Boomer? Yeah, I got it fixed. And you have, yeah. okay. you have 25 seconds to do it starting yep. now. Okay, and <laughs> everybody's here. All right. Welcome, everybody. Okay. Um, Boomer, you got we got her all sorted. Um, so why don't you go ahead and give the uh, the audience a bit of an introduction, would you? Okay, so everybody knows knows a little bit about me anyway from the channel. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, geez, I don't know what to say. Like the model railroad has always been uh, something I you know that I've done since since I was a kid, like most people, I guess. You know, I think yeah. the first the first model railroad I ever built was a small shelf layout from I believe it was a uh, an early article from Model Railroad magazine in the 70s. It was like a four foot by 12 foot, uh, you know, shelf layout, basically. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it was like three, there was three levels to it, you know, sort of a switchback kind of idea. And I'd grown up around trains, grew up on trains, right? Like as yeah. like my little brothers and I traveled a lot on, on the supercontinental as kids. So trains was always part of our life, like when we were younger and, and I had a, you know, sort of developed an interest in it at a very early age because I just loved miniatures. I always loved models, you know, the first, I think most model railroaders have all built a model kit. And, uh, yep. you know, at some point, uh, I can remember the first one I built. And then, you know, when I discovered trains, like, I don't know if I shared this story, I might have, but uh, where my brother and I, we snuck into the basement of the neighbor's house. He had a big, <laughs> he had a big O scale 
like uh, I think it was uh, Lionel train set. We were peering through the window, right? And yeah, I right. coaxed my brother in first. There's all those windows, those double hung windows there. Eh, that... Yeah. And so uh, we went in there. We were just blown away by this layout. It was just, uh, you know, we were like nine, ten years old, and yeah. And uh, and the guy came home, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I bolted out the window first, and he got caught, kind of thing. But that was oh. my first first. <laughs> First exposure to model railroads, right? And it's stuck ever since. And and so That's, I've always, yeah, so, always so sort how, of had it in my blood. But how long did how long how long were you just in uh, in the in in this guy's basement, just taking it all in before the? Oh, it was the, uh, I don't know five or ten minutes, but it was quite high the bench work. So we were you know like up on the t toes yeah. looking at everything, right? Yeah, and, right. Uh, yeah, and it was just like mind blowing. Like I didn't even know that you know what a model railroad was. Like I was ten years old, I didn't even know. So, and uh, you everybody in that you didn't turn it on, did you? No, no, no. I wouldn't have even known how. Right? We were just oh. like, looking at all the <laughs> yeah, we were just looking at all the trains and the mountains and buildings. It was just mind blowing. Eh? And you know, back then, I think a lot of people did that. Like um, that generation, you know, that would probably be. Oh, you know, I think they're probably passed on now. It'd have been maybe in their 80s or 90s, even. Uh, you know, they built model railroads and nobody knew about it, right? Right. Yeah. They just didn't tell anybody. They did, you know, they had their regular job or trade or career and they never told anybody. They had this big, you know, model railroad in their basement, but mostly O scale, though. Like it was the larger scale back then. Right. Right. HO was just starting to come out, but. So you got you got hooked up with with your first uh, shelf layout. Um, so fairly early on, how many layouts would you say you've built over the course of time here? Okay, so now, like as of today, I've probably built about twelve. Holy and, cow! Oh okay. yeah. wow, that's that's incredible. So ha, ha, all eight have they scale? all been have they all been no, shelf uh, layouts? different oh, scale? Wow. Uh, okay, different scales. Like early on, I I, I sort of played around with the. Uh, well, I was exposed to O scale first, but I couldn't afford O scale. Yeah. I mean, we were poor kids, you know. And well, I mean, we were growing up in the economic anomaly of the 60s and 70s. The parents were making money, but you know, we were, you know, we had to, <laughs> you know, deliver newspapers in two feet right. of snow, you know, and earn everything. But um, I got into, uh, I think I was uh, HO was my first uh, when I saw HO set in a in a hobby shop window, actually just up the street from where I lived in Kitsilino in Vancouver. Wow. And I uh, try, tried N, but HO I did mostly. And then uh, when I got into my 20s, I started to get into narrow gauge. And I'll just, like, you're probably familiar with this magazine, right? Like, or uh, a lot of your viewers are. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, the, this the is, yeah, this is what got me into scratch building and really opened things up for me. Like, you know, because people were, you know, they're just like, Mike, you'd love this too. There's a lot of S scale plans in these magazines, and oh yeah, uh, you know it just just goes on and on. I mean, I, like I would have to say that this is probably one of the classiest model railroad publications like ever published. The, right? Yeah, like the, in terms of its quality, right? The Narrow Gauge Gazette, right? Oh That's yeah. Like if you don't have copies of these, if you see them, grab them. Yeah, because yeah, I don't even know if you can really get them anymore. And uh, if you ever find back copies of these. You know, I used to have most of them, you know, I probably still have a lot of them around in boxes, but, but I got exposed to the narrow gauge thing. Cause I really started to get into scratch building when I started collecting those magazines, like just, you know, basic structures and stuff. Sure. And, uh, and it just pulled me right in, but, you know, I always did like miniatures and models growing up as a kid. Right. And it was always something I was doing on the side. So like, you yeah. know, through the different careers I had. Yeah, so I mean, like uh, for example, like um, old World War II aircraft and, and well, it's big in the di yeah, oh yeah. yeah, 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 the military diorama thing, uh, which is another. I got a couple of books. I just wanted to quickly show you what really yeah, inspired go for me. It. Um, okay, so these uh, I don't have Ray Anderson, but the okay, so this guy here, people are familiar with who this guy was, Shepard Payne. Shepard Payne. Yes. He was the guy that had all the monogram Ravel contracts and he was building all these dioramas, like the little, you know, the scene with the tank and the figures and, and, uh, wow. him, yeah, him and, uh, Francois Verlinden. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
And then there was these two guys here, and I just want to give them a quick plug. Uh, these guys are probably way long into their retirement. Now, Bob Letterman and Louis Pruno, these guys built dioramas that would just would blow your mind. Like uh, the quality of, I oh, mean, wow. they were just mind numbing, right? Like uh, the guy built the, um, you know, the Paris gun all from yeah. scratch, right? In one thirty first Holy cow. Look yeah, at like that. Every wow. Plastic. Like everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Everything out of evergreen plastic, like these guys. And the one guy was a retired cop from out from uh, New York. And the other guy, I'm not sure what his background was. But so I really got into the diorama thing. Like I was uh, the very first model contest I entered. The guy that won first place was had this A26 Invader sitting on a desert sort of tarmac with, yeah. you know, the, you know, the, the, uh, palm tree and the spilled over 50 gallon drum and he won first place and i won second with the 32 ford roadster and i never forgot it right and i said yeah. that's what i'm going to start doing is <laughs> building dioramas right yeah you know so and, and i mean there were model contests back then when i was a teenager there were model contests everywhere shoppers drug mart every hobby store you know really uh oh yeah they all had bottles like model contests you know in the fall and in the spring and sure so i was right into all that stuff right the military modeling thing oh yeah i mean i i could remember when i was a kid you know it was i got the the monogram catalog right and it was i wanted every you know bomber from world war ii that you know the lancaster the b25 i wanted all of them right um i, I built the b17 of course but you know, it just, uh, that was, that's a way to, to get started is, is by building those model airplanes or tanks or even like, uh, like tabletop gaming stuff is even yeah. really cool now with the dioramas that they build. So yeah. And I, I did, a, I did something really similar, Andy. It, it, it was my grandfather for my birthday would always have me, he, he would buy the model ahead of time and then have yeah. me come over to their house and help him build it. So then I had the finished model on my birthday to be able to hang him. I, I had B24 yeah, right. Liberators. I had, I had a beat. Yeah. I had the Enola, I had the Enola gay, yeah, right. uh, you know, I mean, that was a huge model back then, you know? And then I was, I showed it speaking of that military stuff. I showed Andy a thing. And I just told him, I said, boy, do we have a long way to go is I saw this thing on the Toro modeling contest of Los Vados. Have you ever heard of that? It, no, these there. It was one of the things that I sent you on Facebook Messenger, Andy. People are modeling in black and white. What? There's photos of people oh, yeah, modeling. I that, yeah. I and I just I even showed my wife, and she says, "Wait a minute, is that going to be painted?" I said, "No, they modeled it in black and white. Yeah. So it's nothing but shades of gray, right. and and you know different tone, oh. you know." Um, because if anybody's ever heard, listened to Boomer, you know, black and white aren't colors. Right. So, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> it's toning, yeah, this, toning up, yeah. toning up and yeah, toning this down. One model, you know, this one diorama, I'll just show you this quick too. This blew me away. This one here. Wrong one. This one here where the guy did like oh. the U505, like, the U mm. uh, like captured, that you know, what, cool. you know what, before it sunk. Like it's just on, like it's just like, I mean, this stuff was totally like the benchmark and like revolutionary, right? Like dioramas right. were like the diorama. Like, I don't know if people know the full history, like in the context of model railroading either. Like, with the diorama, like before the advent of the silver particle camera, that's how you captured an image. Yeah. Like in the 19th century in Europe, like if you, like if you were like had money and you went on a safari somewhere. And you wanted to bring back your impression, like you know, rather you know, rather than paint right. a canvas flat, is they build this three-dimensional scene with taxidermy, whatever, of the lions on the Serengeti and the antelope like shrunk in a smaller scale further back with a, a rounded painted backdrop, and you walked into it, and it was just like numb, it was like incredibly like immersive, right? Right. And this was a big, big thing, but it was the uh the camera, like once the camera came into vogue, the silver particle camera, yeah. all that, all that fell out of vogue, right? You know, like can you imagine a society without a camera? Like no. how would you cap? Yeah, right. Like it was all paintings, right? It was flat canvases, 
and then sculpture. And so the diorama fell out of vogue and it was all, it was like a lost art until the um, late 60s, early 70s, when these guys here started doing it in the military and the guy, and the John Allens and the, uh, John Armstrong and all those guys, they understood that, yeah. right? Like they were aware of that and familiar with that type of modeling and they applied it to their model railroad. I mean, look at John Allen's Goran Daffodid, right? The thing is yeah, just right. a stunning work of art, right? Right. Like, you know, the way he like did the mountain. I mean, the whole, like that whole philosophy was behind all those masters, those model railroad masters that have, you know, passed on, right? And that's, so. you know, that's that's really interesting that you you, you talk about these, you know, these masters that we think about but they 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 have these giant sprawling layouts but they all come from the from the the diorama right their 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 techniques or their their genesis comes from that diorama not the big sprawling plywood pacific that we'd have in the basement yeah i mean that's sort of the driving philosophy behind most layouts that really impress me that i've seen over yeah. the years where there's this um like it's really hard to explain because there's so many unbelievable like layouts. Like, you know, I mean, I've looked at so many layouts and it's just so cool the way each individual sees the world and then they express it, you know, because there's the big data about, you know, the big debate about, uh, you know, is a uh, model railroad art, right? Like, I don't know if you really want to go into that, but I mean, I have a good argument <laughs> for it. Uh, yeah. You don't have to be an artist to, to uh, build an effective or impressive model railroad, right? Like you don't yeah, right, to, exactly. But exactly. you're actually practicing the virtues of art when you're doing it. Like if you're painting and sculpting and you're recreating a scene with yep. emotion and immersion, you're actually practicing many aspects or attributes of art, right? Yeah. You so know? I want to, I want to, uh, Boomer, and I apologize for this uh, in advance. I'm going to filter in a few questions from the audience as, as we're having our chat here. Yeah, but, for sure. Uh, Mini Prince uh, has a has a good question here that kind of ties into to what we're talking about here, and it says, uh, "What is it about miniatures that are so appealing to us?" And you know, what yeah, right. what do you think your opinion is on, or what is your opinion on that? Um, for for our friend over at Mini, Bernard at Mini Prince. Yeah, he does some nice work. I like his stuff. I've, yeah, I've, uh, yeah, yeah. I like Hashtag not doing. sponsored, by the way. They. They're not I mean, a sponsor. He's the kind of guy that's figuring out the, you know, the learning curve, right? Like the computer, like the, you know, the blender, the cat or whatever they're doing. Like that's where he's putting his time in. And that's just going to keep showing. It's going to keep producing, right? Because yeah. that's really where all the work is done. Like if you sculpt in a tactile sense, like that's the way I like to do it with just, you know, clay and sort of right. hands on like old school. I mean, I don't have the time to learn that, but the, but, but the people that are doing that now in the hobby, like if they keep, keep at it and just keep yeah. at it, it's just going to grow. Right. Cause right. I really think the 3d, like the miniature aspect of what can be achieved through a 3d printer now in every genre is, is only in its infancy right now. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know, to capture something miniature like that, like to, there's something about seeing something and then, I don't know, maybe it's a, control thing i don't know but for me whenever i saw something in you know like in life like train related like a scene like i thought hey man i want to miniaturize that like i can't yeah. take that scene home but if i build a model of it i can you know sort of keep that that you know the emotion of that i can encapsulate you know the emotion of that scene and preserve it you know and have it right like own it you know have it be well, unique that that's like today one of the best things that we have are, are these things here so you yeah, see us right. you see us you see a scene like you're saying you see a scene you can actually capture that scene in real time take it home and then go ahead and recreate it as you know and, and use all these different you know diorama techniques oh, to exactly, where yeah. to where years ago like you were saying you didn't have that ability it would take it would take three months and you only had to hope that you got the right picture that you wanted, you know? Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. With the 36 roll. With the Fuji. Yeah. You're taking 36 roll, only two turn out, right? I, know, I, 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 I tell my wife, 
<laughs> I tell my wife all the time, I said, you're sure glad this is, you should be glad this isn't film camera because yeah, <laughs> we'd know, be yeah. broke. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, the digital camera. Hey, listen, like this, like this device that you just said, Mike, has been part of the driving force behind River Road, like to get all my like prototypical scenes to work from because I throw them up on the computer from different angles and I can study, you know, right? And it's there yep. and I can pick things off. I can bring it home with me. Like we all have a phone, like you get like photographs, like you can't, like it's pretty tough to build without photographs. Right. Like, you know, right. like as an inspiration. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you don't yeah. have to go to the site to, to, you know, to build your railroad, but it helps to have photos, you know? I think that, I think it ties into that. Even, even for the, the people that build the railroads of lies, you know, the freelancers, right. You still have to have that plausibility, right of, you know, you can't have a 85 story skyscraper in the middle of the woods, you know, type of thing. So you, you need to, you need to, you know, kind of scale it back. Um, but just, you know, and, and, and have some, you know, I guess real elements tied into that, to that freelance structure or railroad. And I think, I think by studying or incorporating pictures is a, is a great way to essentially paint that scene. But I think, I think you guys are touching on something too, is that, like for me, when I think of, of of building the model railroad, I actually think of of like myself standing in the scene, right, and and taking it all in, and having the trees and the grass, and you know, even even recalling since you know I grew up next to the railroad tracks that smell of creosote, right, in the ties, oh, yeah. and on a on a cool spring evening, you know, taking a walk down the railroad tracks, and there's a bit of fog and you know, the grass is just starting to get green and there's that heavy dewy smell of creosote in the air. And like, I right, think, I think yeah. just by actually having the, the 3d physical, you know, space around you, you kind of, kind of transport yourself to that, that locale and really connect with it. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that's great. Um, so thanks for thanks for answering that. The I guess the other thing is is so you've you've built twelve layouts. Um, is any one of them your your favorite? Yeah, River so Road. Is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and I think that's the way it is for everybody. Like we always get better, right? Like we always yeah. increase in our skills. Like it's just the, it's just human nature, you know. Like yeah, the human right. sentient is an incredible thing. Like you know, the creativity, like the learning curve, right? You know, like. I mean, I'm sure just about everybody here that's listening now has built, you know, one or two layouts or they're, they're working on a layout. And then when they get to a different section later on, they're achieving skills and becoming aware of skills that have matured than when they first started the layout. Yeah. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, and I'll, I'd say that, you know, um, this one that I'm building right now is, is by far my best attempt at it um at at a model railroad for for sure hopefully um hopefully it, it becomes my favorite and i stick with it this time so i'm not building my yeah 16 yeah. 12th rendition of it but yeah okay. yeah oh no hey listen man you got a big big canvas there right? yeah like compared to me even like i think uh river road's only like two feet deep by 26 feet long so is it in a bedroom? Is it is that where you have it? Is it like it's in, in a bedroom? bedroom? Yeah, yeah. It's in okay. a uh, ten by twelve, uh, like you know, climate controlled room. Yeah, and I love nice. it too, right? Like I just like I've done that. Like I did that, I think once or twice before. But the but uh, the way River Road started, like you know, like I started with Glover Road. Like after I finished school, I went back later in life as a mature adult to finish a degree, but. And then I was sort of bored and I found this door, like this door skin. And that's how I started Glover Road, right? Yeah, right. The one before. And I just bolted it, just pinned it to the wall and sort of, I thought, oh, I'll put a header with some lights. And, you know, and I always, like I had built shadow boxes for the museum. Like that was a really cool decade, the 90s, where I, yeah. I had a really, really, I was very fortunate. Uh, I was working for a guy that built Granville Island in Vancouver. Oh, right. Yeah, wow. his name was John Keith King. He passed away, unfortunately, a few years ago with, with cancer. But he was such a beautiful mm. man. Like he was, he, like the guy pulled together like about twelve artists from Canada that were all into models, and like just 
uh, like guys that were, you know, the engineer, the model engineers that built the live steam, like he yeah. found the best of those guys and the best model ship builders. This one guy that was, uh, he was incredible. The guy like, like mm. he was an alcoholic, but the guy I've never seen it. No, no, I'm not kidding. You. <laughs> this guy built ship models. Like I'm talking sh like builders models. Yeah. Okay? Like, like real museum, stuff mm -hmm. that that's that's even beyond film industry stuff like stuff that's made to last a hundred years like just to, like guy built the hood 11 foot long hood it's in the uh i th wow. i think the british monarchy bought it like when he passed away but anyway, that's another story but the guy was incredible right and i used to like i worked with him like i was doing this big layout for the museum like you'd ask you know what was my favorite layout that was the funnest project really yeah, the old scale one that we built. We tried to do uh, John Allen's. <laughs> well, we, I did. You know, like I tried to do is kind of. You know, I was inspired by John Allen. I wanted to do the big mountains, but but all trees though too. Like take it to another level. Like the bridges I built on that thing, and and uh, and the trees. There were six thousand trees on this thing, like old scale. Like oh there my were, gosh! Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, the guy we were doing. This <laughs> big, you know. The, Oh, yeah, they were huge. They were like three feet high, some of them. Oh, my God. Because this is O scale, right? So if you yeah. do the math, like trees here are average 200 feet high. Like, wow. That's a small Douglas fir, actually. So anyway, this guy, he was funny. Like like uh, his dad worked for the CPR. Like he came from Winnipeg. Like The guy had this huge collection of all the cutlery and porcelain from the CPR, like from coaches, from high end, yeah, you know, first class. Yeah. And anyway, he started a collection and he was a very successful architect in Vancouver. Wow. And uh, he had all this CPR stuff. So he built his own museum and it started out with fishing, marine, and then uh, 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 model ships. Like that's when I came in. Yeah. And then uh, before he built the model railroad, and then I brought him in a bunch of dioramas that I had shown around the Pacific Northwest in seattle and canada and it won all these awards and he says i want to buy them all off you i says oh geez i don't know if i really want to sell them but he said no here i'll what do you want right and oh, so wow. he, you know so he signed the check and i was like whoa so i said okay fine and then <laughs> yeah and then somebody told me a friend i had like an artist group that i hung out with they said yeah. don't worry about it because you never build a build unless you sell them like just sell them yeah. and make more right and, right and so so then he he approached me and said, hey, can you build me a, a model railroad in this? Like, it was like 110 feet long by, I don't know, 25 feet wide. It was this huge wedge and this sort of uh, really oh, cool, man. yeah, this like above a bar. Like, as soon as he came into Grand Rapids, <laughs> Island, it was, yeah, it was this pie-shaped building, yeah. right? And uh, he, like he says, I want you to build me this model railroad just like your diorama. So I said, no, no, I can't be done, right? Like, like I can't do that kind of detail on oh of that size and magnitude. Like it'll take ten years. Yeah. He said, "Well, he said, can you do it in a year?" And I was like, "What? <laughs> you know, a year, right?" He said, "You can hire people if you want. Hire whoever you want." Right? Really? Yeah. So I hired oh like God. all these all these model builders and model people that had experience in model railroads and stuff. Oh so my I gosh. Hired them. Yeah unbelievable yeah that is a serious yeah. commission <laughs> wow. yeah. it was wow. two hundred fifty thousand dollars. that's what it cost oh, to build it oh my god a quarter million dollars <laughs> yeah when it was all done right and then yeah. like okay so the reason why he did it was is he acquired this collection of 148 scale uh interurban bc electric they were the most unbelievable models you've ever seen like yeah. 148 scale like yeah. like narrow gates gazette style like these things were incredible, man. And these teachers, like they were retired, like doctors and teachers that were building these things. Yeah. People that you would never think, right? Yeah. And they were unbelievable. And there was this big uh, competition to get this collection. It was the, all, every BC electric uh, interurban car, they built the oh. whole fleet in 148 scale with the trolleys working on the, like unreal. On the camera and all that? Yeah, everything. Oh, wow. And so he he got half the collection and, and like he takes me into this room. He says, OK, see this. I want you to build this into the diorama with the CPR. And I want you to. So it was it was three rail. It was uh, O gauge three rail. It was two rail and and, and uh, oh, wow. traction, traction and fine scale all combined into one AC and DC. Right. 
It was just unbelievable. Like, and then um, the whole thing was foam, like two inch, like he, like, like, I, like I sculpted the whole thing. Like I yeah. laid in like, like foam. I was snapping it over my knee because I just got out of the film, film industry. So I was like, you know, really sharp. I was, you know, a sculptor in the film industry. So I, you know, was doing that for years. Right. So I could yeah. fly. And anyway, so I was, so I said, oh yeah, okay. You know, I got this right. Yeah. So I just started snapping foam over my knee and scribing again, guys, and just PL three hundred by the case, so gluing it all in, building oh, this wow. massive like rough. And then I took two Olfa knives, like one in each hand, and I just started going nuts. I carved the whole thing <laughs> like Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> just yeah, yeah. Right? and there was a bar downstairs. You know, it was like crazy, right? Like guys, oh. I would. Like I didn't go down there, but the guys that were working for me did, and they never come back. Like if yeah. lunch, they go for you know, right? Yeah, have a couple was, beers, and that was the yeah, end of it. Know, yeah, that was it, right? I said, yeah, you guys better go home. But I stayed and worked because I was a real, you know, real sort of workaholic kind of. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, really hard worker. So, and uh, so we got this thing roughly done in about a year. But the tree, oh yeah, the trees. Like I tell you, I don't know if I tell you on the trees. So I was trying to figure out what's the best way to build these trees with a taper, right? Yeah. You know, like ta like tapered. Like yeah. it's a lot of work just to to plane that. So I, yeah. I found this whack of pool cues, right? Like there in the go. back room. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so I said to the guy, I says, Hey man, can you get me pool cues? He says, Yeah, how many do you need? I said, I don't know, six hundred or something, right? Yeah. So then I took pool cues and I made some molds out of like I sculpted clay over them. And then wow. Yeah, and then I got another guy, like, in film, a buddy of mine, to make the molds. And then we were pouring it at a resin. We bought these five-gallon drums of, you know, resin. Like, two-part yeah. resin kicks off in, like, two minutes. We were pouring, like, you know, the same three trees, like oh the big gosh. ones. Yeah. We just And we mixed them all up. And it was, like, everything from trees, like, this big to three feet high. You know, so, like, it looked like... You know, I was trying to do John Allen's Gorn Duff and that look down the valley, but all trees, though. Yeah, yeah right. It was, just, it was just insane, right? Oh, my Project. God. I couldn't imagine working in that type of condition. I imagine that resin probably smelled terrible. Yeah, it's just, you know, we were all like, like uh, we were all getting paid really good money. Yeah. And uh, we were having so much fun, burgers and beer, you know, the whole yeah, thing. Right. It was just really like a dream, right? It was a dream oh. job. And uh, furthermore, uh, I was building dioramas, like these little, you know, one foot by, you know, whatever, like still doing that at home because I had a studio at home. So I was building those as well. And he would buy those. And then oh, I wow. would do... Um, like fine scale oh like you know like people talk about rivet counting right like look <laughs> i've been there right like the yeah. rivet counting thing but those were for people that paid me to do it though sure like i don't yeah like i'm not going to do that anymore that's like oh that's a sweatshop routine for me i just oh, i just want to have fun now you know yeah, yeah i'm having I a mean, lot of fun now with it, and Road. it shows it certainly shows based on uh what we can see on youtube and you're, it's just, it's. Well, for, I was fortunate, right? I was yeah. lucky to have like a career, you know, like a, a career. Like I always did it as a kid and then I always found jobs doing it. And then there was a part, like a 20 year period where I was doing it full time, like six days a week. And you're bound to get good at it, right? Yeah. Because you're just right. doing it constantly, doing new projects and you never get tired of it because because there's always a new project, right? And, and the inspiration and the money. Right. Like that's the greatest compliment you can ever get is money. Right. Yeah. You know, when someone pays you for something like that, it's like, OK, yeah. <laughs> so, so, sign me know. up. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Boomer. So is that is that kind of how you started to get your kind of love affair with the Tamiya paints and, and things and pigments yeah. and stuff like yeah, that. Right, yeah, Cause question. I mean, yeah. you always, because you always, yeah. you always talk about in your videos is like, yeah. oh, you've been using this for years. You've been using this for, how did you end up finding out about those? Was it just by accident or did you just kind of find it? And, you know, I mean, cause you've got me sold on them. I know, I know Andy has a lot of them. Yeah, I have, it, I have I've, all sorts of them I, here. Yeah, I've got. Yeah. The, yeah, my checkbook hates you, by the way, uh, yeah. because <laughs> I've, well, hey, listen, I can't. Man, you know how that started? I'll tell you. Okay, quick. Yeah. Okay, so there was a guy. So uh, I was building these uh, 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 like two piece dioramas that were twelve feet long. Like they were railroad shelf kind of scenes. Like 
sort of one-to-one -one scale, but in uh, double O, like and HO. Like I built this big, uh, it was a 12-foot modular layout of whales, a little, uh, it was double O with uh, Hornby stuff. And it was just the hills of whales and the, you know, the signal box, all that. So, because I was into the British rail stuff for a while too, right? Oh, wow. And so I took it to this show, to this model railroad show, and Lego, <laughs> Lego won first prize, but that's okay because everybody was in the Lego. That was the thing, yeah, right? Yep. And it still is. Like Legos, like it's a cool culture, right? But anyways, this guy came up to me at the show and he said, "Hey, man, do you, uh, you know, uh, would you like to custom paint locomotives for me?" And I said, "Yeah, okay, sure, right? What do you got?" Yeah. And this guy had a model railroad uh, re well, sort of a wholesale retail. He's he markets in the states, yeah, and up here. And uh, I don't really want to say his name right now, but uh, all right. anyway, so the guy says, hey, so I have all these American clients that want custom painted locomotives, Cato, like when Ooh. Cato was really big, right? This yeah, was they're... in the, yeah, like early 90s or so. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think it was. A, yeah. Anyway, so, uh, so 75% of my clients through him, like via through him. Like he would give me these uh, HO scale locomotives and I'd get like 150 US for every paint job right oh wow and and most of them were canadian pacific and the the uh, trains that he was giving me were like uh, heritage bnsf he said strip those and paint them red i was like what <laughs> right <laughs> yeah 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 like you know because he couldn't get undex so then he ordered from cato finally they came through and he was getting case loads of cato like uh sd40-2 is where the big ones right yeah yeah and and 50% of that 75% of the American clients I had wanted Canadian Pacific and Canadian National SD40-2s. That's what they wanted. Sure. Yeah. So I was custom painting like these things. I was using Tamiya paint because he, he says, I'll get you the paint from Japan too. And I said, yeah, great, because I could mix it with isopropyl alcohol. And isopropyl alcohol was cheap. I could buy it by the gallon at a horse and tack place for 10 bucks. Yeah, right. And it, and it mixed it. it it like suspended to be uh, to me a pigment beautifully, right? And then it would settle out, and you could see it later and know what you had in there. And it was just very commercial orientated paint, like on a high end, right? Yeah. And right. so I was painting everything with Tamiya, and I was getting it for free. I had cases of Tamiya paint, so I became indoctrinated and addicted to it. You know. Oh wow. Yeah. That's. I mean, I suppose you and for the the volume of. I mean of of locomotives that you painted i guess you got pretty familiar with it why why quit using yeah. it if it's yeah exactly it's been awesome that's that's unreal it yeah and it, then it was like uh the weathering thing came in like how i did the watch thing like the isopropyl pressure wash like how i developed that was uh uh there were clients saying hey man can you weather like uh a dozen uh hoppers for me like just a uh, light weathering yeah so i yeah so i was in my studio one day and i thought you know geez i don't really want to like to do a really good job you really got to focus in right like yeah like it really is a you know sort of a one-off at a time kind of thing you know if you want to do a really nice job but this guy said oh don't worry about it like just do a casual kind of like they're kind of faded and weathered so what i would do is i would line up all these like uh hoppers right yeah. brand new right and then i would just spray them all with uh uh like raw umber paint paint yep. them all with to me with raw umber cover them all like the whole take the trucks off and then i just took isopropyl alcohol and just turn the, the pressure up on the compressor and use it like a pressure washer and oh, just sure. washed it all off and it all yeah. like 90 percent of the paint just you know went into the newspaper and when they dried they looked really good and so i was banging off like 20 or 30 like every half hour speed painting right. or speed yeah. weathering right yeah unbelievable yeah. and he was okay with them i said hey man like are these okay and he said yeah fine so you know oh, it was cool. like this was all during that decade or two where i was in the in the saddle with the whole deal it was just crazy right yeah crazy. right yeah. we we had one of the questions in the chat earlier i i think it's kind of gone a little bit is what it, what exactly do you have you done in for like in the movie and film industry or what what do you do for a living now well now i'm sort of semi-retired i work for the government <laughs> <laughs> oh there you go all right <laughs> easy like enough the, yeah that's easy like the municipal government right i work for the township of langley actually i have for the last 20 years 
So even then I had a studio and I was, you know, doing, you know, work like private client work and stuff like that. But I kind of phased out of it over time. I started to get burned out. Right. Right. You know, I just, yeah, Yeah. it just became like, I don't blame the people like, you know, like after a while, like people, people have a right to demand quality, right? Like they have a right, you know, like you're always going to get people that you can never satisfy. And those would start to, you know, I started getting a lot of those and it was like, okay, I can't really keep doing this. This is because, because I was getting sloppy too, you know, like I was, you know what I mean? Like, to be honest, like I was getting kind of, oh, geez, you know, I'm not really putting everything in this anymore and it's not fair to them. So, right. Exactly. So I had to close out uh, that chapter and, and then move away. And then like in film, I just did a lot of model work. Like I built sets. I taught in a university, uh, uh, stagecraft, like later on when I was in and out, I did a few gigs in film, uh, but I sort of got out of it in the late nineties, early two thousands, uh, when I started doing more of my own stuff. Sure. So, so did, did um, anything for anything we know? Uh, I just, uh, well, there was some, uh, there was a big period of where everyone was doing space shuttles. Like I remember I, I did a series of space shuttles for, you know, those, yeah. I never watched the movies. I didn't care because, you know, <laughs> I was working like 11, 12, 14 hours a day. You don't care about the movie. Well, you just care about it. the work, yeah. right? <laughs> right, yeah. right. Because, yeah. uh, you know, you can't, like, you don't, like, you know, you can't even view the movie anyway because you, you, you're you always looking for cables and microphones and flaws everywhere. And right. you just got, like, you weren't really into that part of it. It was just like work, right? Yeah. And, no, uh, but it was fun too, right? It was a fun job. Like movie model making is like, I learned so much in that industry. Like I'm thankful for it. I really am. Like I learned from guys that were just, just blew me away. Like, like they could just build stuff from just a pile of wood and plastic. They just look at the plan and like, that's where I learned a lot of that. Oh, really? Like how to draw from, oh yeah. Like how to draw from photographs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like a lot of times, like, you know, you just go to a site or a location, like if you had to reproduce a scene and you just photograph the area and then you just draft drawings right from the photograph. It's a technique I show how to actually I'm doing another episode more specific to that to make it more understandable about it's actually not that difficult. You can take is, a, it, uh, is, it, is that similar to how you showed uh, sculpting that moose? Like where yeah, you similar, had those. With building, so with architecture, it's 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 even easier. Once you know the size of a door, like once you know, okay, door is seven feet high, right? Three feet and wide. And three feet wide. So if you uh-huh. get a perpendicular photograph or a straight on shot, you can do the math with any increment you want superimposed over that photograph and find out all your dimensions within six inches to a foot. Yep. And in, and in uh, the model world, that's close enough, right? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's probably more critical and larger scales. Like in the movies, like we never built any of those small scales, like HOO, never built any of that stuff. It's all quarter scale, right? Right. It's worth three inches, like three inches on a tape measure, right? Is one yeah. foot, is one yeah. foot in the model. <laughs> so a normal. quarter inch is an inch. So, so a quarter inch on your tape measure is an inch on the model. So you can figure out how big it is, right? Yeah. 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 Incredible. So going back to the Tamiya paint, we did have a question from the chat. So uh, do you, do you use anything else chemically through your airbrush besides IPA? No. Um, and then do you have multiple airbrushes that uh, work yes. for you do uh, for work outside of IPA or just, yes, or is I it do. just you do? Okay. So yeah. you, so for example, like lacquer thinner, those types of things you have. I don't shoot air- lacquer thinner anymore. And I'll tell you why, like I'm allergic sure. to it or something. Like it's a Ooh. horrible, like I, like I can cover all the bases now with IPA, like sure. 50%, like, like it doesn't really matter. Okay. So 50% won't eat through, like if you spray a model with Tamiya and you want to strip it, let's say like 50% yeah. will remove it, but 99 will peel it right off. But you can shoot uh, Tamiya with 99% or 50% and it won't look any different on the model, right? Really? No, it won't. So, I mean, I'll mix a lot of times Tamiya with 50% when I'm just spraying like a locomotive. I'll okay. probably use 50% because I don't want it to be too, like, 
too sensitive, right? Like in case I put another coat on or something like that. But if I want to, like if I'm weathering, I, I try to use 99% because I can cut through it easier and faster if I want to, right? So, and plus it, it you know, like IPA cleans your airbrush as you're spraying it with the pigment. It's actually cleaning your airbrush every time you're huh. shooting paint, right? And it's so easy to clean too, your airbrush, right? It's like yeah. it's easy peasy, right? We need, we need to clarify one thing here though, is the fact that boomers in Canada, okay, they can get 99% in Canada. I think well, in the United States, no, I think in the United States, the best we can get is 91. Oh, yeah. that's well, you plenty. Can, you, that's you can plenty get good. I mean, that's usually what I use. Yeah, yeah, 70 is good. Yep, great. I've used that before. Yeah. I used but in case I, I didn't want anybody to go and say, hey, we can't find 99% in the States. Well, that's because we, we're we not able to have it here. <laughs> so. Well, you see, the thing with 99 yeah, right. So 99% just means you get a little more bang for your buck if you thin it. Yeah. It's less water, right? Yeah, it's less yeah, water. Right. Yeah. yeah. So then, so if you take a bottle of like 99% IPA, and then cut it in half, 50%, pour it into another bottle half, and then top them both up with water, you basically have 49% or 48.5% yeah. IPA, right? Yeah, Right, yeah. But not yeah, rubbing right. alcohol. Nope, you can this use is rubbing alcohol, though. This is isopropyl alcohol. Yeah. You can use nope. rubbing alcohol as well to paint with, but and it won't remove, like, layers, though, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's quite the, that's quite the introduction. We're just, just shy of under 40, 45 minutes here on the live stream. So, um, that's, that's fantastic. So we've, we've, we've built, you've built, I should say quite a few layouts, uh, over the course of time. And there's a, I guess your, your career has almost, you know, or has, has helped you along the way, um, almost so that you could model very efficiently, um, at a very high level in terms of quality as well. So I think that's really neat to, to see that, you know, a lot of your work, um, you know, is, is tying back into your hobby as well. So fantastic. Um, I do want to just give a shout out to the chat here real quick as we carry yeah. on. Um, so we, we're, we're Did I just disappear for a minute here. I just got to pop out for a second. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we do have we do have uh, about 150 people in the chat tonight. Um, so if we there are a lot of questions coming in, I will try to get to every every you know as many questions as we can here um, as as we go through our our segments. Um, and we are going to do a hashtag not sponsored this evening. Uh, just talk about a couple of things. Hopefully, we've talked a lot about a lot of products already. But then we are going to do a short line of the show special edition for this evening. And then we're going to talk about uh, with Boomer here, uh, ultimately, uh, the question that Heath brought up earlier um, about the, the diorama um, or the model railroad and, and what came first and why. So um, so keep bringing your stuff back into the chat here. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces out there. Model Railroad, IMRO.com is here tonight. Um, Otter Creek and Rio Grande uh, off the rails. Welcome. Happy Valley Hobbies. Welcome. Um, seems like a good crew tonight. I see Ron's from Ron Trains and Things is here this evening. Um, congratulations to Ron on his uh, subscriber milestone uh, that he had out there. Split yeah, congratulations. Rock is here this evening. Um, Heath from Humanity Junction is here. Andy Crawford's here. Uh, Roy um, Eltham is here. Um, Wigwag Workshop, welcome. <laughs> and there is there is the star of the show this evening. Looks like we have is that Dusty making an appearance. I give everybody a, a view of Dusty there. Yeah, everyone had to get a view of Dusty there. <laughs> She's, she's been, right in since Glover Road. She's been right in on the whole. Yeah, thing. I, I see that. Um, so she looked uh, really irritated at, with you when you started the overpass <laughs> scene because you took her laying yeah. down spot. Yeah. <laughs> she's got a side to her too. Right? She's got, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most girls do, right? You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that's and, that's and uh, I see very. I, I see that uh, everybody has been correcting me already. Uh, so you know, I'm. Got to got to be a little humid, 
That's fine. That's good. I did not know that you could get 99% in the United States. I was told that yeah. you could not, but apparently you can. So that is awesome. Now everybody rush yeah. out to your favorite 99% store and, and grab some. <laughs> go, go get some. Look, hey, you know, with, you know, with iPay, like, I don't want to, you know, downplay the other alternatives too, right? Like, you know, using solvent, like Humbrol paints, like they're all good paints. Like I right. grew up on Humble and testers, like Humbrol enamels are the best pigment, like hobby paint there is, right? Like for oil base. Yeah. To me yeah. is acrylic, right? So they're both two different paints, right? But the advantage to acrylic is that, okay, there's a bit of a learning curve because it dries really fast, like yes, super fast. And I love yeah. economy, right? Like that's, I've learned to appreciate economy because of my history. But like Humbrol paints, like, you know, the little cans, I don't know if they still sell them like where you're at, but I think they're almost pretty much gone in Canada now, the, the Humbrol like solvent based paints, but or they're trying we, to get rid of them all, but. Yeah, we don't. I, I haven't seen. I haven't. I seen haven't here. seen one for a long, long time. I know in in Britain, like in the UK, they you know a lot of really good modelers, like master modelers, use Humbrols as well, and they are you know like figure painters too, and and model railroaders. Like their culture, they still use a lot of the enamel pigments, and they're excellent paints. I have a few still that I use, so rarely, but I still use them. So I think I think that's a, a pretty good segue, uh, Boomer, to to get us into our first uh, uh, segment off of the intro. Um, I think it's time to we'll we'll take a short commercial break here, and we'll introduce the Greasy Meat Hands Band for everybody, and we'll get right to on. our first. Let's see here. Did I bring it? Did I bring it up here? I did. Yeah. Let's bring it up. So welcome back to to the second section podcast here. Thank you, Greasy Meat Hands Band. We're gonna go and talk about hashtag not sponsored. Couple of products items that we're especially excited about here. Um, Mike, I know you had a couple things um, that you wanted to talk about this evening from the from the land of is it Rapido, right? Yeah, Rapido Land just made a couple of neat little oh. announcements. Oh, look at this. <laughs> We're getting there. Um, yeah, Rapido Land. Uh, can't remember exactly where they were, if they were down at IRM or someplace. They were at the Illinois Rail Museum. <laughs> yeah, and they made an announcement about some things in N scale. Yeah. Uh, they're coming out with a, I believe it was a Santa Fe Reefer. Which looked really, really cool. I mean, like repeatal quality detailing kind of nice. stuff. It's, you know, in N scale. And then also the same thing with a uh, plastic, a four bay plastics hopper, mm -hmm. more modern type plastics hopper, ribside plastics hopper, which again, it, it just, repeatal does a great job with their stuff. I mean, they're, they detail oh, things yeah. all right to the, right yeah. to the nth degree. And in and, and N scale, no, they're not, but I mean, they're, uh, they're, they, they can, you know, they, they came out with these two things in end scale and didn't really give a, I think they, they, had, there's a video out on this. So if you go to YouTube and look it up, I believe there's a, you know, that's where I saw it. And, uh, the other thing is, is the, for me, at least being a Milwaukee road guy, it's down the road a little ways. And I, I don't need any of these. I even though I model S scale, it's well documented. But I might buy a couple of these just because of the fact that I think they're cool. Is they're coming out with the? Oh, I'm gonna screw this. I'm gonna screw this up. Good it's job. It's the yeah. Thanks. It's the P F forty P H dash something something. Basically, Metra's Metra's. Uh, commuter units that got the GP59 style body to them. Nice. Though they're coming out with those, and it looked like like three or four different paint schemes, and they were kind of coming out with those in conjunction with some CB and Q fluted side bi-level cars that 
they had. So they would have Burlington, BNSF, and Metra all with those, with the CB and Q cars, it looked like. Wow. And then they said if those sell good, that in the future, there may be Milwaukee Road and Rock Island. So that because they all had sim- very similar cars, so um, that that was really exciting. And then they also said that they're coming out with the the Burlington Northern E nines in commuters. Oh, yes, and that's something that they're that they are in the process of like developing. I, I believe they've got a bunch. They said they got a bunch of the drawings done, and but they're still doing R and D on it and everything. Yeah. Yep. So it it really was an exciting announcement from them, and it literally has nothing to do with me. But I just thought it was the <laughs> coolest thing I'd heard in a long time, uh, because they're so known for doing all their Canadian prototypes, right? And and uh, they're coming out with so many more. They're starting to get more and more into the American prototypes, especially the commuter stuff, and those guys. Those guys haven't had anything for the most part. You know, the only bi-level kid I grew up with was a Three Brothers one. Right. You know, uh, and and that was, I've only seen one of those ever in my entire life. So, hmm. uh, yeah, so it was, uh, was kind of neat. So check out their announcement. I believe it's on YouTube. Uh, um, if I can find the link, I'll have Andy throw it into the show notes. I'll get her into the show notes for yeah. you. I can handle uh, that. Um, uh, but talk to the producer, yeah, that's, uh, that's my, that's my hashtag not sponsored. I just kind of thought it was like a really neat announcement this time. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, Rapido, they just, they always come out with, I guess, eclectic equipment, I guess, to say the least, or safe well, to say it a, a certain way. Well, in their, in their announcements are, it's worth watching for the entertainment value alone. Jason Schron is hilarious. He should take that show on the road. Uh, I mean, he is a funny guy, but uh, they, they really, they really did a a nice job with all of that. So it's uh, kind of looking forward to seeing how the finished product ends up being. Oh, there's West coast rails. (laughs) Yeah. He's near, yeah. uh, He's out in Vancouver here, I think. Yeah, Sorry, so yeah. no, no, oh, that's, no, that's, that's all right. right. That's, <laughs> that's part of the fun is interacting with the chat. Uh, so yeah, maybe uh, catch a track side sometime, eh? But anyway, yeah, I don't get down to Vancouver very often in Wormuth Langley. I love, love the valley out here, just it's all out here, man. <laughs> and then welcome Lots of later. train action, I'll tell you. Yeah, I oh, bet. Hey, listen, I just want to give you a little, little, uh, little, uh, Perk here, so I have a real a uh, episode that I just produced called the Short Line Local on S or Y ah. that I got the other day, and I'm going to release it right after the show. So really, <laughs> I'm going to publish yeah on my channel. Well, I know what I'm going to be. I know what I'm going to be doing tonight. <laughs> yeah, after after we get done with the show <laughs> so, here, I know what I'm going to be doing. Ten minutes, yeah, it's pretty good actually. I was yeah, lucky so, to get it. I was really lucky to get it locally here. A switch, oh, wow. uh, yeah, a SRY switch. It was cool. Uh, yeah. I thought awesome. Mike would really like that too. Well, Andy, oh, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Okay. So, Mike, you model an S, and Andy obviously HO, right? Yep. yep. So I wanted to ask you a question, Mike, about S. Oh boy. So <laughs> this is yeah, awesome. Because I don't want to forget. <laughs> I don't want to forget, right? Okay. Like, like, where do you get your your running chassis from? Like if you wanted to model a like a GP9, like where do you get the chassis or the body or anything, right? My shelf right up here. See, Mike, oh, okay. he's I, probably not I, wearing I, pants or something weird like I, that. That's why he's not. Well, saying. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold <laughs> on. Like, do they have any any selection at all? Right. Oh yeah, they have they have a selection. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> no, that one's empty. Where the uh, heck is the see? one I wanted? Oh, here we go. This is a. Do they have one of these, Mike? Ooh, what's that? That's um, a, uh, guess what this is. Can anybody guess what this is? Here, let that me put like you a, on the big screen, Boomer. Let me see. That looks like that looks like a B40-9. That looks like a B40-9W. I'm going to. Or a, a B39. BCOL. Yeah. Number 4645. 
C44 BC rail. Notice Ooh. the windows. Notice yep. the teardrop windows. Yeah. Because in Canada, they use these to switch. They don't use switches up here. Like <laughs> they switch everything with anything. And oh, yeah, these, like these cabs, like I was teasing our friend from Athern there, Andy, uh, a few weeks ago. Remember? Yeah. Yep. What's the 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 uh, Canadian cabs like teardrop window? Right. They did this for switching so the engineer could see the conductor down on the track. That's why they did that. I've run one of those already. BC run... Rail had these, and CN has a bunch still still running. Yeah, yeah. When I used to be on the road, I've run one of those when they first got BC Rail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They... So that little teardrop makes a big difference, eh, Mike? Oh yeah, yeah. It can yeah. if you're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a company called American Models for like GP nines and stuff. Oh yeah, you know, you know. It's American... you know. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, American Models, and then. These are actually really nicely done. Uh, do they have a like one, a website, a dedicated S scale website? Yeah, AmericanModels.com. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's all there's all sorts of places that you can get S scale stuff. American but then models. the the thing is, is this is kind of the knock on it is the fact that it's not actually any one phase of GP9. You kind of have to read between all the lines on it. So. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, there. It it has it has phase one. It you gotta like do your phase, own chop nose. Eh? Yeah, you got to do your own chop nose. But if on the top, it actually has inserts, so you can make this a phase two, a phase three for radiator fans. Cool. You know, I I oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. end up. I don't. I typically just. Take some, what is this, 20 thou, 20 thousand styrene. I put it in there and then I just make yeah. my own fan. Geez, that's right up my alley there, Mike. I, it may, might tempt me into, you know, oh, look at this. River Road. Hey. If I finish River Road, you never know, right? Finish hey. River Road and then start, <laughs> and then start on an S scale project. Listen to this. Uh, yeah, no. don't do it. <laughs> right, <Andy. laughs> don't no, do it. That's, that's going to be a rabbit hole that you go down. You're never going to get out of. Yeah, I know <laughs> what that's like. Yeah. Don't do it. So, uh, don't do it, Andy. No. Yeah, right. yeah, no. yeah. This is no, good. I'm this sticking is good to River stuff. Road, man. I'm hook, line, and sinker on that one. Uh, oh, that's, that one. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. I can't wait to see to see it in, in all. Okay, so 164 scale. So basically, yeah. with, S, with S scale, it's. It, you can do everything in S scale with a ruler. I believe right. it's one one sixteenth of an inch equals a foot, is yeah. what it comes out to. So it's really like Boomer was saying. If you get your dimensions, it's even easier to calculate where you're at because I can just do it with a tape measure if I needed to. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The ratio is really friendly. <clears throat> the ra yeah. ratio is really really friendly. So yeah. Yeah. It's 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 uh it's very it's a user friendly scale is if you're willing to put the work in to model the uh yeah three sixteenths yeah three things thanks neil three sixteenths equals a foot um yeah right so yeah, it really lends itself to the more intimate scene doesn't it like if you're to do like you know that grain elevator that i'm sort of redoing version two of right yeah like here right. in milner like that would be a beautiful subject for s scale like just the model like and and like if you had a Jeep nine, like switching that out and like, it's just like those kind of scenes, like the smaller rural kind of, you know what yep. I mean? It, S scale is beautiful. It's made for that. You know? And that's what I'm, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm actually was telling Andy yesterday. Uh, well, no, it was, yeah. Yes. A couple, Sunday, days ago. A couple of days ago that I'm going to be building a fertilizer plant and oh, typical yeah. Midwestern. And I've delivered to one. So I'm kind of making, it's going to be a fictional fertilizer plant but it's going to take aspects of all these places that i've seen nice. throughout my throughout my railroad career and i'm just nice. going to implement them all into one little building and then i started watching your thing about how you build these buildings i'm like well okay now i gotta get get some wood and i'm gonna have to mock that up so that's yeah. gonna have to do it that way because you might as well skin it uh, skin that and it's yeah. uh 
I, I fell in love with the way you did that. And I'm sitting there yeah. going, man, this is just, why didn't I think of that before? <laughs> well, that's the beauty of the beauty of model railroading is all like, there's so like the actual, like somebody asked you one time, like as an artist, like, why do you choose model railroading? Like, why don't you just, cause I used to paint, you know, I painted flats. I sculpted, you know, I did a lot of different genres of the arts that I did well in usually cause it was just up my alley, but you know, the model railroad is the most incredible medium for the greater community in the sense that there's so many facets to it, like for everyone, right? Like, right. Um, who was it, the fellow that has uh, the, uh, um, forgive me, uh, it's Otter Creek, uh, the fellow, it's, he's going to be mad at me, I forgot his name. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> he's he's doing the narrow gauge, you know, the... the uh, the, the Otter Creek Rio Grande narrow gauge, you know, right? You know, like he's on yeah. here too. Anyway, he wired like the bottom. Did you see the bottom of his layout? Like it looked like the cockpit of a 747, like <laughs> underneath. Yeah. Like it was just a work of art. Like that, like no, really, like the electrical that he did was like art to me. Like the way everything was just perfect. Like the way it yeah. was wired and stuff. I mean, that's not my thing. You know, no. like I'm keep it simple, right? Like one bus underneath the layout with some droppers. Oh, the two, <laughs> I have two it. color wires. I have red and I yep. have black. And, and that's it. Right? <laughs> yep. yeah, you know, <laughs> like the real deal short line, just a hand throw, man. And the guy goes yeah. ahead with a, you know, with a, a uh, I don't even know how, how, um, actually, I, I was down on the SRY, like I go down there a lot. And there was a guy that it was way ahead. He was 20 minutes ahead of the, like, throwing switches, like, down in yeah. U.S. Minister. I was talking to him. Yeah. I said, hey, what are you doing? He says, oh, I'm just lining up. You know, really? we're coming. Yeah. He says, I'm lining up for, you know, they're going to be coming through here, you know, in 15 minutes. So I'm not really sure how they operate down there. They've, I got to do more research, but. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah, the art, though, you know, just the art, like, all the opportunities. Like, there's so many. Like just, I mean, I mean, you know, right? You can go onto YouTube or blogs, and 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 the modeling, like the quality of the modeling, is off the charts, like everywhere. Like it's yeah. just, you know, it just. I mean, do you know how many people there are, like modelers that are that don't even advertise on YouTube or forums, and they're like Class A modelers, like they're master modelers, yeah. but they don't publish themselves. Right? No, it but and then there's. There. And then you go back to one of Andy and mine's favorite people from the, what does it be, like the 80s, Andy? 19, late 70s, early 80s? Bob Ross. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could that. sit and watch Bob Ross paint all day long. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, he makes it look easy, doesn't he? he doesn't he make he it does. look like it's yeah. the simplest I thing know, in the whole yeah. world? Yeah. You know? He sure does. And it's, it's funny because I... I was just doing my my backdrops over here on on the one side behind me and I must have watched 3 4 hours of of Bob Ross just to get into the technique and then I then I got off on this wild tangent where I'm studying the you know the comp scene composition and and all this other stuff and I'm learning about you know the different elements and uh, something like 19 or 13 or different elements in in scene composition and all of a sudden I just went down this rabbit hole of of learning art and that yeah, was right. that was it kind of opened my eyes up about what is it the fibonacci spiral and and some of those other things that draw your eye in and the rule of thirds and all that good stuff but it was just fascinating um and uh what when and and ralph ranzetti brings up a comment i know we're kind of going off on a tangent track here but um, Why, when don't we <laughs> um you know is that is that photo painted or combo and that is straight up hand painted ralph so i am actually not going to be using photo backdrops on my model railroad anymore because um i personally feel like they take your eye right away from the model railroad um because of the high resolution and all that it, it just it doesn't look right. It doesn't look like it's scaled right to the rest of the scene. So I think that's why I'm going to go and, and learn how to paint. Um, and, and really, so I know a lot of people don't look at the backdrop and I, I want to make sure that my eyes are on the trains. So 
You bring yeah. up a good point there, Andy, about the backdrop, because I know people have asked me about it. Yeah. And uh, just to clear the air, <laughs> I'm not doing <laughs> no. my backdrop. Yeah, I'm not doing my backdrop until the whole the basic primary scenes are done. Yeah. I want to view the whole layout complete because I don't want to force in a background and then build to it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I want to get it all in, get it composed yep. away so that, okay, this checks out, this checks out, move this here. And when it's all in, basically the foreground primary structure, then at the end, I'll look at the backdrop and I can shape the mountain line because it's all mountains out here. Oh, right. Then I can compose the mountain line in composition to all the structures. All right, so that's why I like to do it last. That's And that was one of the things that I had wrestled with myself, but I just, I guess I've never tried it that way. Um, so I always, I always yeah, no, work whatever, from the back yeah. forward. Yeah. Yeah, so. sure. Yeah. I mean, it's different for everybody too, right? Like everybody has their own kind of process, you know, like, yeah, it's, right. It's, it, you know, that's another beauty of, you know, of the human sentient. Like we all, when we see something and how we manifest it is, is unique to every individual because they see it in a different way, right? Like it's, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder and it's always subjective, right? <laughs> you know, so, right. right. Maybe, maybe. You know, that, if you like that Lego a... layouts, well, then great, man. Lego, is, is, you know. That's, that's good. Um, Boomer, I, 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 Mike, are you, are you good on your, on your little uh, project? Or your uh, 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 hashtag not sponsored. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. all done. <laughs> Boomer, did you want to bring up any uh, products or anything that you're particularly excited about, or that you use exclusively that you'd want to share with the audience this evening? Or do we want to carry I, I just, on? Uh, I, I just have what I have, and I'm just just good with it. You know, like to me a paint. <laughs> yeah, to <laughs> me a paint. I mean, there you go. Right. Like a broken record. Uh, let's see. Do I have any new? A guy was trying to sell me a new glue or something but uh oh no well, i mean you know i mean i got a drawer a drawer full of this right right oh yeah i mean i use this That's right. yeah i mean it's not the cheapest but the reason why i like it is because it's like water and it it capillaries into everything so when you're building a model sometimes you can only hold the part to the model you just right. want to flood in a little cement behind it and it, it just works for me you know but um yeah, I I try to keep it simple now. Like I just sure this this paint, this thinner, this cement, and and uh, you know I got lots of the taco sauces. Around. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, so there we go. okay, so here's my taco sauce. I'll show you right here. Here like, we go. You know, when I used oils, right there yep. it is. Ralph, oh, hey Ralph, check it out. Right. <laughs> this one for Ralph Windsor and Newton. Ralph, the best pigment in the world. These guys have been in the business of pigment for 300 years. Wow. Windsor and Newton. Awesome. 300 years. Do they know their pigment? I think so. <laughs> and you anyway. and you just and you make your own taco sauce out of that, right? Yeah, well, hey, you know who uh you know where I learned that from? This guy no. right here, Francois Verlinden, right? He's the guy. He's the guy that uh, took oil paints, Windsor Newton, and mixed them with humbrels and did the, like, he went into fig, like, he just did the whole wash thing. Like, he was the guy yeah. that really made it, you know, made it known amongst modelers in the early 70s, right, was the oil wash. Right. Him and That's Shepard right. Payne, him and Good Shepard one. Payne, and, uh, you know, those guys, like, a lot of the military modelers, like, I know there's a lot of model railroaders that were military modelers as well, or will yep. soon be model railroaders. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once they see the light, right? <laughs> yep. You know what did it for me? You know why I left the military modeling and went, went full, like, sold out to the model railroad uh, subbing genre? It was after I watched Saving Private Ryan. Really? Yeah, I couldn't build another military model again. I just, with my uncles and stuff being in Normandy, and I, it, it didn't relate yeah, to me. It's but when I saw, yeah, and then when I saw, you know, I built a lot of, you know, I loved it. I mean, hey, look, it's a great hobby. It really is. I'm not trying to dump on it. But when I saw Saving Private Ryan, the whole, I just lost the passion for, sure. like, I had this romantic view of, you know, military models and tanks and stuff. And I thought, man, there wasn't much 
romance around it for the real, you know, for the guy, the real men, right? You know that were there, right? So model yeah. railroading had a more benign, natural kind of appeal, and it's sure. and it's beyond that anyway, right? Like the yeah. model railroad takes you like your skills way beyond that, like the scenery and I mean just track alone. You know, look what people are doing with. Uh, Proto eighty seven and Proto forty eight. I mean, well, tracks tracks a model too, right? Of course, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, it yeah. sure is. Anyway, well, there you go. I think I think uh, I, I, I the for for hashtag not sponsored tonight. I think we're going to put a pin in it because um, I, I do want to <laughs> get to the next section uh, because Boomer held up a, a plaque for it earlier. Um, so we'll cue the cue the boot. There we are. We're going to talk about. Oh boy. <laughs> We're gonna talk about our favorite new short line of the show here. So we'll kick and off. I guess the band. what else, man? I got the old original one too. Oh yeah. That was BC Hydro Rail before it became this. <laughs> really? First, yep. actually, first it was BC Electric, Interurban, yeah. and then and then BC Hydro. These these locomotives here are still running full time major workers on the uh, uh, SRY line now, like the, all the original equipment, right? And then it became uh, Southern British Columbia Railway, and then it went into receivership, and then SRY Dennis Washington bought it because I used to load his aircraft uh, when I worked in the aviation industry. I, like, met him many times. Oh, wow. And I uh, used to have free access. I used to go down to SRY, the shop's trap yard. and Like, like I grew up around that railroad, right? Like yeah. I used to go down to the, but it was BC Hydro. They uh, they serviced the the major breweries there. That was a few blocks from my place. It was Molson's and uh, Carling O'Keefe's and BC Hydro Rail went down to Kitsilino, and serviced all the the major breweries and stuff down there. And, oh, wow. uh, and they burned all the last remaining interurban cars down there too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They, they, there was they would, a, yeah, they, they would push it down fire? there with the. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the S, uh, uh, the SW nine hundred RSs would drag them down, and they called it the burn track, right behind Molson's Brewery by Burrard Inlet, and they'd light them on fire to get all the steel out of them. Right? And they just burn and all the wood. Scrap them. Yeah, they scrap them. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, and so we yep. used to go down there as kids, man. We would ride them. We jump on the cars, like and go up Arbutus, and we went home and. Like that, like like the whole culture. Like I don't know if it's like what it's like in the states, but Canada is a little bit different. Like the sort of benign nature of the railroad. Like when we were like in the seventies, was like everybody knew everybody, right? Like it was like sure. And uh, I think even now, there's not a lot of fencing up. You know, like around the railroads, you can sort of walk right up to them. You know, I think it's and, a little different in the states. Yeah, I think um, the regulations are yeah. a little heavier, right? Yeah. Mike, oh, you yeah. may have may have something to comment on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, to a degree, to a degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, they burn the old trolleys. That's right. West Coast Vancouver is horrible for its railroad history. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we hung out down there, and uh, I'll tell you this quick funny story. Can I tell you a quick funny yeah. story about? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah. so so this. Let's do it. So this friend, yeah. uh, this friend that I had worked for. Uh, uh, BC Hydro Rail, this uh, friend that I have now, like he's in his 70s now, he's retired. He worked for the yeah. township. So I knew him. I used to knew him out here too. And he worked for, uh, well, a few railroads. He worked for BC Hydro Rail and CP uh, before he retired. But down at Burrard Inlet, where the Y was, where the SRY, or formerly BC Hydro Rail, would, would end. And that's where the burn track was behind Molson's there. There was an old swing bridge that went across the inlet. Right. Yeah. And so they used it as a lead. Like they go out on the bridge and like they push cars out there. Like it was supposed to go to Vancouver because uh, there was an argument. There was a big political battle with CPR and BC Hydro. That's another story. But they would push these cars out onto the bridge like boxcars because they had to do a runaround. So yeah. anyway, <laughs> so this friend of mine, I wonder if he's even watching, but it's land. Right. So he worked for for the uh, crew down there. And he said they had these little, like they're called torpedoes. You might know about these, Mike. You remember? Yep. I don't know. Maybe it was before your time, but they're these no, little no. torpedoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They put them on the track, right? 
So when the yep. car runs over them, they pop like a shotgun shell. So the guy would know if they reached that point. Because they never had radios back then, right? Did they? Yep. Oh, like yeah. back in no. the early 70s? Yeah. Early 70s, they were just starting to be, they had them, but most crews right. didn't like using them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. So the conductor <laughs> didn't have a radio, though, I don't think. Did he or what? Like in the early 70s? I don't think so. I, I don't remember. I think there might have been one on the crew or something right. like that. They weren't very abundant at yeah. that point. Anyway, so, so Len says that that they, you know, like they put the torpedo on the track just before the bridge, right? Like there's a swing bridge like it opens so boats can go through. Like right. Said, yeah. Right? Yeah. So anyway, so he puts the torpedo on the track. So they're pushing this long string of boxcars. But I guess when the car was, you know, like coming along the wheel. It, it, there was some, I don't know, water on the track, but it, it didn't pop. The, <laughs> it didn't pop the torpedo, so he didn't know he kept pushing the car, and he pushed two box cars right into the inlet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like the bridge was swinging open, right? And the two cars went in, right? And then, oh, you know, they finally man. figured it out, right? Because they could feel it or whatever. Yeah, and he said that, oh, the guy was a rookie or something. They blamed it on him or something. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's, it's just like the stories he told me. Oh, and one more quick one. When they were down in Vancouver, they were running a um, – it was a little subcontract or something. Anyway, the train got away, and it went off one of the end of the spurs and went right across a boulevard down the street. And he said that, like, right off the track. And he said that to get it back, they just drove it on the concrete. They just drove <laughs> it back through the troughs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they drove it backwards right back to the spur and then re-railed it. It's like the stories that he would tell me were just, you know, hilarious. Oh my gosh. Right? I remember I remember, a, I remember a Canadian national in uh they did it they did something like that on purpose in the winter of well, was that the was it the winter of ninety two or something along those lines where they were like over in Quebec or something like or or Toronto? Where they power was out and they had to use they used a locomotive, and right. they just, they physically walked the locomotive right down the oh, middle yeah. of a down road, the street. down yeah. the street, and there's pictures yeah. of it and videos of it, and they just hooked the locomotive up to like the the, the city <laughs> the hall building or the power grid yeah. and just used that. Yeah. You know, it was uh, that's yeah, that's not unheard that... of. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've, I've I've re-railed cars that way once or twice in my career. <laughs> not that anybody sure. not that anybody yeah. would know about that. I yeah, tell you what, no, if yeah, you go right, over exactly if, right. If, yeah. you, if you go over yeah. snow enough time, if you go over the same <laughs> spot of snow enough times, it turns to ice. It gets hard as yeah. it'll get hard as steel. <laughs> mm. So that's but, that's a I think that's a fantastic intro, Mike, to the to the short line of the show segment this week. So what is it gonna be? It is the S R Y. Okay, listen. Okay, guys, wait, wait. wait. Oh, 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 oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Here, let oh, me uh, let me do the bumper do, for all the do fans. the bumper here. Do the bumper. I'm gonna. All right. Thank you, Greasy Meat Hands Band. Welcome back to the Second Section Podcast. So Boomers got up to. Go grab wow. a few, <laughs> few materials here. And uh, tonight, our, our short line of the show is is a special one. Right, Mike? Yes. It, okay, listen. All right. I know you guys are going to listen. All right. I know what's coming, all right? <laughs> Let's, I'm not going to even throw any, make any excuses, nothing. Uh, we're doing the SRY. We're not doing Iowa Traction. I promise you, the next show, it will be Iowa Traction. We're doing the SRY because Boomer models the SRY. So we're it's doing that so that way we can do all this. So you know what? I would. I understand. You know how to get a hold of me. Everybody in the chat knows how to get a hold of me. I know my phone's gonna start blowing up here pretty soon. <laughs> it's no, just it's all good. <laughs> I I apologize. I know this is the second show in a row. <laughs> Hi, Dusty. I know it's the second show in a row, there but you go, split rock. Yeah. What 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 why would he say? He said, put the cat back on camera. <laughs> oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> it's more interesting. All right. 
I, I gotta figure this out. I gotta. <laughs> I don't have a share tab down. Is there a present? Try the there, present one. There is. I'm yeah, they changed to... names. I oh, see gosh. that. Yeah. All right. Let's let's go here and here, and then we're doing that. Southern Railway of British Columbia. Can you all see that? Can oh, you see okay. That? It's gotta be fun. Oh yeah. You know a little something about it. You ever hear of it, there, Boomer? <laughs> 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 so, like Boomer was saying. This railroad has actually got a very storied history. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an electric railroad. Then it was, uh, then it was uh, BC uh, British hydro. Columbia Electric uh, BC Hydro. Yeah, and, and then it was a British Columbia or Southern Railway of British Columbia, and now it's part of Washington Corp, which yeah. is SRY Rail Link, um, which is for those that may not know, they are the same company that own. Uh, or used to own Montana Rail Link, and then also uh, I and M <laughs> Rail Link back in the day. Really? Um, yeah, I and M Rail Link at one point was a uh, Washington Corp uh, uh, withholding. Yeah, or holding, I should say. But uh, it's a, it's a really interesting railroad. It's about 130 miles long, ish. Well, it's about what is it? Yeah, they, yeah, about 130 miles, right, Boomer? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's about a yeah, like total trackage. Uh, yeah, it runs and, yeah, it runs from uh, basically New West to Chilliwack. Hmm. It's about 100 miles there. Yeah, I'm trying to find the map. I had a map pulled up. Yeah, here. that's it there. Yeah. Yeah, right, right here. On that mic. Bring it. Yeah, of course. Oh. Yeah, whatever. I'm not going to redirect to nothing. So. It's uh, let's see. But the I line that goes it. into Vancouver is not gone now, though. Like there's a line on there that <laughs> this goes to Trap Yard. It doesn't go into Vancouver City anymore. No. Yeah, it's a uh, that it, orange it's, part that you see there. Let's see if oh, I can find a, a different. Wow, you found all those maps. That's good. <laughs> well, yeah. If you just put an SR, SRY Rail Link map and then go to maps, yeah. Because I'm looking at my map here on the, uh, like they're different on these two here. brochures I have. What anyway, it used like? to connect with. Hey, look at this here. Like, here's a pick for you. Whoa, three eighty one. This is, that is the this is the only. This is the last and only SD thirty eight non turbocharged AC operating in Canada. Wow! Wow! And it's now in the livery. It's in the new livery of SRY, right? This was 19, yeah. uh, 1972, I believe, or somewhere around there. It's still, like, all been rebuilt, restored, still running strong. Yeah. So, so Boomer, that one you had just up recently on your YouTube channel, didn't you? On a model yeah. of it, correct? 381, yeah. That's the first yeah. one I modeled for the for the layout, yeah. It's nice. sort of a it was sort of a dog's breakfast kit bash. <laughs> you know, I had a, like, I had a, like it's a GP 38 long hood with a cannon cab and a Cato yeah. drive. With, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know. You know, it's just, yeah, I just took everything I had in the box. When I, when I got back into the hobby, I built it after I got out of school, I didn't have any train stuff. I was yeah. flat. Oh yeah. I was flat empty of train stuff except a box or two. So West West Coast Rails has said the new livery is called the Meatball Scheme. Yeah, yeah, yeah the was, Meatball yep. Scheme. Yeah, yep, He's the Meatball right, Scheme. Yeah. Yep, yeah. it's got a big yeah. red dot on the side. <laughs> it's got a big red yeah. dot on I the mean, side. I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll show you. I'll show you here. Uh, okay, let's see, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll reach there. <laughs> here, there if you look, one. if you look, uh, let's see here. This is their. This is the yeah. SRY website, yep. which is pretty pretty informative website. Wow. Um, yeah, actually, very well. Very um, he's a really, really interesting guy. Like, if you Google uh, Dennis Washington, like, even th on YouTube, right? Like, uh, you yeah. might find, like, the fortune, or what's uh, I can't remember the name of it now, but you'd find it if you're savvy and you know oh. how to keyword search. So you'll, and uh, they have an interview of him on his yacht. He's a really neat guy, actually. He's he's an American fellow, right? Really? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He owns Mike, Montana. Yeah. He owns Montana Rail Link. Mike, what is 
actually, uh, he owns a few railroads. He owns Montana Rail, or uh, he might have sold. Uh, he had another one, a, a coal hauling uh, short line too. Down there, I can't remember what it was, but because when I used to um, work in the aviation industry, when he came in there, he was one of our clients. When I worked at an FBO, when I used to drive jet fuel for Esso way back, and uh, I met him, and uh, he used to come in there, and I used to load stuff on his on his aircraft, like he had. Uh, you know, mm. you know, the big business jets and stuff like that. And his pilots gave me all the brochures, right, of his yeah. railroad and his whole portfolio. Oh, cool. So, yeah, he's quite a quite a guy. So, hey, so Mike, here's the, here's the SR. A, yeah. On yes. your map up there in the upper right-hand corner, there's that box. Click on that, that oh, little yes. box to yeah, give, yeah, her, yeah. give her the full screen effect here. Okay, so here's the map of the SRY. This... uh. This is the CP right here. So, yeah. and then you have the CN right through here, which, if I remember right, which this was, is the old was British BC Rail. Yeah. Was BC Rail. Yeah. Um, and then there is a uh, SVI, which is over here. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, uh, that's South Vancouver Island. Oh, okay. There we yep. go. Yeah, that would be <laughs> he it. He owns that too. <laughs> Like that's the, the whole island. Does it? <laughs> that's oh, the old wow. E N railway. That's the old E N N railway, and it was through the barge slip that they accessed that railway. Like that's the oh wow, that's the interchange. The barge slip that I modeled on section one on River Road is the interchange marine port to the island uh, railroad. Is that the one that it's this at Anassis or yeah or whatever Anasis it is? Anassis Island. Anasis 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 island. island. Yeah. Yeah. He also so, yeah. owns C-SPAN, like every barge, every ferry, like uh, he owns the whole, like he, he's pretty much got a monopoly on, on the whole coastal rail industry, right? Yeah, the, 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 it's a really neat little railroad if you, if you, and they have a lot of really old, they, they ran GMD ones at one time, mm -hmm. which, which. Really? Yeah, which which yeah. was a question that I which I was a question I had for you, Bert Boomer, is is why have we not seen a GMD one yet on <laughs> on the layout? But uh, oh, no, hold on here, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm just looking so, at the roster here. <clears throat> oh yeah, GMD one, yeah, okay. They still have it. It's probably so, on the burn track. Yeah, yeah probably. Think, yeah, but but the the, the yeah. railroad as a whole, it's the one thing that's really interesting is, is for a, for a little railroad, they do from what I read, they do a rather, I wouldn't say extravagantly large amount, but they do quite a bit of auto rack. Yeah. Um, uh, auto, auto rack. Stuff. Yeah. They basically have the, the whole auto rack. He has it in his pocket, the uh, uh, Washington, like all like Anasis Island is the hub of all automobile in industry, like export, import, like on the West Coast. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it, Anasis Island is the major hub. And yeah, they're that that's one of their main industries is the uh, auto rack. Yeah. And there's there's videos on YouTube. It has a rather a rather neat uh youtube presence this i i just watched this this one uh th it's a 17 minute video and i just watched that one and the thing that i found was really neat is the fact that it almost seems like these are manually operated semaphores for a diamond yeah that's that, that they that, would cross the cp yeah, yeah that's still there actually that's you know still functional apparently it, do they still manually operate them? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's yeah. that's yeah, incredible. That is still there. Yeah. There's a and, couple other cool videos there. I see. There's. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a very cool video. Boomer, What's yeah, nah, that guy. That guy. Who, who, whoever. <laughs> yeah, that guy. I tell you. But <laughs> the thing is, is it's the you see GP nines, a pair of GP nines pulling yeah. auto racks you don't see that in today's railroads um like not around here not around most of the united states you won't see that they um, really love their jeeps boy like around I, here and and also like i'll tell you why because i've well i mean i've you know 
interacted with the crews and that quite a bit and I've been connected to them over the years. I was talking to them one time out here when they were switching out the uh, Milner grain elevator and they had 381 and 384, I think, that the six axles. And he says they don't like using the six axles out here much because they, uh, you know, they wear out the turnouts, right? They're hard yeah. on the turnouts, right? The the longer trucks and the Jeeps are ideal for the short line, you know, little sp short spurs out like all over the place out here, right? So because they traverse so, the turnouts easier. Yeah, There's so less what, and less wear and tear, but anyway. So what drew you to to model this prototype then, Boomer? What what was the big what was the big draw? I mean, this is a, like an obscure model railroad to pick. Um, what what was the? It's big not obscure draw? out here. <laughs> no, I guess not. Right? Yeah, you see it every day. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's very unique railroad, right? When you think of it, I mean, look at the history of it. Like, I grew up right like blocks away from it. Yeah. And played and played down there as a kid. You know, when they were in that yellow, you know, and red livery with the quasar, the hydro quasar. Yeah. So. It was just burned into me. It was just like a fascinating, you know, I, I just love those things. I'd, I'd hear them like, you know, blowing the horn at night right. during the day. It was just, you know, the railroad that, you know, was in the neighborhood kind of thing. And then just, I was always like later on, I got my twins, it's hard to photograph it. Right. And yeah. I have a huge collection of photographs from like even friends like get like you know that worked for the railroad gave, gave me photos of stuff and sure. so i have a big collection of you know the old negative uh just so much material and then i used to go down when i worked in the aviation industry for a while i i used to go down there and they gave me total access to the shops down there i've been on like a lot of the units i got yeah unbelievable like data and photos of the in, inside and so i can model them to you know to my heart's content, right? Because I have all the source. I mean, there's so there's a there's a lash up for you, Andy. Yeah. yeah. What, what do we got here? That's a GP9, GMD1 GP9. <laughs> so so the the question there's a there's an interesting question that kind of comes back from Otter Creek and Rio Grande. He says, "Why not model the 70s when when you grew up? Why what what's the what's the draw to today?" Yeah, it's funny, you know. I what you know, I was wondering if that question would come up because there's, you know, why don't you model steam? I've had that too, right? Okay, sure. so okay, so I model what's you know what's you know what's relevant to me now. Like that's like yeah. that's where my passion is at. Like I yeah. can't really, I mean, in the seventies, I wasn't. I, I was chasing other things but trains, right? Even though right, I like right, yeah, even right. Even though I like trains, <laughs> right? You know, I always like trains, but. After being exposed, like after the transition from uh, when it went from Southern British Columbia Rail, where they had this sort of uh, red and white, there was a short period where they had a livery between the the uh, Lionhead logo, Washington Corp, and the Meatball. There's another uh, paint scheme. I don't know if you can find it, Mike, but that's when I started to really focus back in on the railroad again, right? And then when Dennis Washington bought it out and I started to get access down at the shops, I just got pulled right into it, man. Like the whole culture around the short line and the people that work for it. And just, I don't know, it was just, you know, something about it. And uh, I just started collecting stuff, you know. And yeah. um, so you have a, a, a tremendous connection to this railroad, not just I from do, a, yeah. there's a person, there's truly a personal aspect to this. Yeah, there is, you know. And uh, of course, you know, like when COVID happened, that was it. The doors were closed. They weren't let. Okay, there it is there. Like Mike's got it now. Yeah, that livery sure. there was cool. That was when it was between uh, the old livery, like BC Hydro. It went to Southern British Columbia Railway. Like that's yeah. what SRY stands for, right? SRY, right. the acronym means Southern British Columbia Railway. So he kept that. Dennis Washington There's a good kept shot. that. Uh, yeah. They had a funny hockey stick kind of, you know, kind of like what BC Rail had. Almost like, like a, almost like a almost like a banner, like the white and the red yeah. create the banner yeah, that wraps yeah. around the engine a little yeah. bit. That's cool. That's I did a, a model like that scheme. for a guy once too. A, a uh, SD thirty eight. I did that paint scheme for really a client. Client. Yeah, I kind of oh, miss it actually. I really liked it. But okay, so see that one there. That oh, okay. Stop. Sorry. Go back. Uh, yep. That one there. Okay, so look at the logo on the side. See the Washington logo with the lion head. Yes. Yep. Okay, so if you can find a more better view of that can you zoom this, in mike at all 
Oh, there's there's a there's a let me uh there's oh, other boy. engines. No, there's other engines with uh, the lion head on it that I can get. Because get... huh? you're gonna find something if uh, if uh, you research like uh, pulp mills and logging camps up the coast of Western Canada, you will see that little lion head logo, not the W part, but that little lion head logo on locomotives. Right? Huh. Like just right the little line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that goes way back further than you know. So he must Dennis Washington must have had his uh, his hand in way before he bought oh uh, SRY with the pole bills and stuff. Original or when he had the Montana Rail Link, they did not ha- they just had the two lines. And then after a while right. they added the lion head. Yeah. So and- and C SPAN yeah. too has it. Like the C SPAN, if you look on the C SPAN tugs out on the coast, if you Google C SPAN tugs uh, and all the older ferries, like the rail ferries, they all have that same logo on them, the lion head. Wow. He owns them too, but they're just different companies, right? Wow. That's yeah. why he can operate, right? Like that's why he can operate. Like they are the cleanest. Like when you see these locomotives, right? Like live, like, it's like, man, how do they maintain these things? They look beautiful. Right. Like I got this video, like I'm going to upload this video with the SD35 that they just got from Montana Rail Link. Hmm. The thing has just, just been restored. It is like, it's it's just beautiful looking, right? And I got yeah. really good video of it last week. I was so lucky. And it was MU'd with uh, one of the SD38s. And they really take care of their equipment, right? That's one thing I like about them. Yeah, I mean, not much in the way of weathering then for the for some of the locomotives and and other equipment if they take care of it so so nicely. Only prior so, to to a repaint can you really like. That's why I haven't really. I mean, I need to. I have other ones that I'm going to build that I want to spend more time on. I sort of rush the ones I have now a little bit, but sure. Um, I don't want to over weather them because when you look at them, like they're clean, like they really right. keep them clean, right? <clears throat> So That's, Boomer, is this is this the is this the barge slip that you modeled? No, that's the connector in Nanaimo. That's the other end. Like that's to the SVI. Okay. That's to okay. the SVI. Yeah. And all, all right. they have left now, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you you uh, SRY experts, but I think they just deal with propane over there now. Yeah, it looks like there's quite a few quite a few tank cars going on or coming off of the barge here. Yeah. Wow. Um. Yeah, and so, then, so yeah. I, I suppose these are all just old hot cars that are being used as idlers then for... Yeah, idler cars. And yep. um, yeah, there's a story behind that too. Like some people say, oh yeah, they you know, they use those idler cars so that they don't drive the locomotives onto the uh, barge ramp or the ferry. But that's not really true. Uh, there are other reasons for that uh, other than just um, that purpose, you know. So there's a different reasons for why they use the idler cars. It's not just because of weight restriction, but that, but that particular port there connects with the one that I modeled on section one. Like that's why I did that because, yeah, because the reason why I did that, cause I didn't have a lot of space. So I thought, how can I create more options for staging and for other traffic? Right. Sure. Well, what, well, what better reason than to build a, uh, like a barge slip. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, now you can, I mean, I could run ENN RDCs on my layout, and it would make sense because they came over from the ENN on the island, which is owned by SRY, right? Um, I can run uh, early, late propane cars, um, grain cars, right? You can bring them onto yeah. the layout, basically, and then run them down the other end and then have them disappear off a of yard staging or whatever. That's one of the reasons why I did that. That, you know, having that ability to add more diversity to your railroad and have it still be plausible. Right. That's cool. This this is a fascinating little railroad, Mike. It is a really, really it and you know what I think. Okay, is so those interesting... locomotives right there, Mike. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay, so those there's there's I think they still have six of those. Okay, or five, and those are SW nine hundred RSs. From yep. 1970, they're the same ones, still running. Oh, man, 
with flexicoil trucks. Flexicoil road yeah. trucks, yeah. Yep. At full length, full length, the full length handrails. There, there's they were a lot of. They came with that, Mike. They originally had flexi coil trucks, which is really they... weird. Which uh, is really weird for this style of locomotive because a lot of them had the uh, hand grab at the very top, yeah. and then just a real short one right on the ends. Yeah, and then no, 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 basically fall protection or handrail protection on the sides. Yeah, this is the thing that's really cool about this railroad is the fact that it it really lends itself to being able to be modeled in any scale. There's because yeah. of the equipment that they run, every scale's got GP nines. Every scale's got SW 1200s, which can be made into these because they're the same wheelbase, same basic door configuration to a degree, but louvers can be just changed in and out. But, and then the exhaust stack, you just take one off and boom, you're there. I yeah. mean, it, it, there's so many different things that you can do in any it, it go from n scale to even i could do it in s i'm not I'm, oh. I, no no i'm not changing again guys okay okay I'm so rapido had uh, uh i gotta throw this in because rapido released these undecorated sw 1200s you remember those yeah yep right okay so yeah. if you go back under videos where i did a review i was just stoked man like this. yeah i was off because i was was wanting to get sw 1200s for for 20, 30 years, like I have some proto ones, right? But when right. they released, yeah. So when they released their Undex and I saw them and I ordered one, I couldn't believe my eyes when I opened the box. It There's there's nine long hoods in it, in the kit with yeah. six, six caps and, and, and like 20 sheets of photo etch. And I couldn't believe it, so I ordered another one, right? So I, oh, wow. it's only, oh, yeah, because you know how it is in this hobby, right? Like if you you got to buy it. If you don't grab it, somebody else will, and you'll never get it again. And yep. That's true. Yeah. So, so you know what I did? So I, so, uh, so I bought two of them, right? And then, like, I already had the video of the review in the can, but I didn't want to release it because I wanted to get one more. But he had a few more left, right? Oh, and man. So I, yeah, so I posted the review, and the guy called me. He called me up, the guy from Otter Valley, and he said, I just sold like you know seventy of my switchers, man. <laughs> <laughs> but they bought up the Undex, and then then he told me that Rapido told him that they'll never release those ever again. You'll never uh, get those. Yeah, like uh, you won't get those deluxe kits like that. Like I yeah, couldn't believe uh, it. Right. So here I am with these Proto. Like the Protos are pretty good too, but they're not as nice. So here I am with the Proto. Plus they came with two sets of trucks, Mike, in each one. Oh yeah. Yeah, both like styles. In the kit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so here I am with these uh, uh, proto older units, which are still pretty good if you're a kit bash. You can make them into a fine like model, right? Right, yeah. So now I have all the extra photo etch and uh, GAC and details I need because they come where you can build up nine different switchers in each kit. Right? Man. Do you yeah. know, do you happen to know, Boomer, what the history on the, I know these are Southern Railway of British Columbia or were these originally BC Hydro cabooses? Okay, so those cabooses, I don't know a lot about those yet, but I've had my eyes on them lately because I'm going to have to probably scratch build like the cabooses because they still use them. You know that? They still oh, use yeah. the cabooses. Yeah. They look very much like an like a New England East Coast type of... Uh, uh, no, they're custom like, built. They, oh, yeah, they're, they, yeah, they are, but they look very... The yeah. cupola looks very similar to, yeah, uh, to an right. East Coast type cupola yeah. to it. I think they were originally BNSF like chassis. I think that's where they got them when there was a big when they had the merger, right? There's BN BNSF because they have a relationship with BNSF, right? Right. Yep. I mean, they have a good relationship with all the railroads, but they have a real because in New West there's a connector there. There's BNSF, CN, CP, and oh. there's a big BNSF uh, terminal down here, like up here in Canada, in New West, that they interchange with all the time, right? So uh, I think that's where they would have got those originally way back when it was when it was BN, like Burlington Northern. But uh, I'd like to find out more information. I'd like to find – there's a guy doing a resin, like a 3D of that. I was looking on a forum the other day of that caboose. Oh, wow. That'd yeah. be kind of interesting. Yeah. Because I got all the decals, the meatball and all that stuff, so – I just can't get over that you guys call it the meatball. <laughs> just well, look like... at how they, hey, you, you know what? You'll always see these, like an MU'd, like Jeep 9, 
uh, SW900 pull in one box car. You notice that? I see it all the time. Oh yeah. Here. Yeah. So huh. I was so I was talking to one of the rail workers there just a little while back, and he was giving me all this information, right? And he was saying, "Oh yeah," he says, "We don't fall under federal regulations." I said, "What do you mean?" He says, "We charge whatever we want." Whoa. Like they don't really. Fall under, yep. They don't fall like SRY does not fall under the uh, federal tariff regulations in Canada for rail services. They charge whatever they want, right? Wow. And um, they have a big contract with uh, plastics industry out here in Langley. Like there's there there's several. Plus, I found another industry that I threw in as a bonus on this video. I'm gonna I'm gonna publish right after this. Yeah. You got to check it out. And I pretty much covered the whole switch of. Uh, ipex plastic so they move a lot of plastic pallets out here in the valley wow yeah plastics no. industry is bigger than you realize now there's a there's an engine you're gonna have to do there boomer the gray what is this yeah i it i i don't know i don't know but i've seen this i saw this combination of units they've been kind of married together on several different photos and it's i think that's a, i don't know is that a jeep 7 because i know they have a jeep 7 no, uh, that's a nine. Oh, it's it is a, a nine. It, yeah. it, it is a nine, but it looks like it's one of the CP, like one of the former CP rebuilds. But yeah, the, the bell is the bell right. is missing, and it looks like it was a remote at one time. I wonder if this mm -hmm. is not one of those slug units that they've, like they have, because I know they have several right. slugs, right? Yeah, notice the ones with the air tanks on the long hood, and then there's a dynamic brake there too. Yeah, that's on the island. That one. That's near the island terminal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So hmm. so that's that is the SRY short line of the show. <laughs> Andy, any any questions? Any comments? <clears throat> any anybody still with us? <laughs> so we we have many people still with us. <clears throat> and it's been it's been it's been a just a, a really, really cool um short line of the show this week because boomer adding the the local and color commentary really really helps uh with and i go through the pictures like that i kind of yeah. thought well i'll just let yeah, boomer talk and yeah. i'll just do the i'll just do the, the pictures oh yeah no mike you click did a good job. Click. <laughs> thanks so, it, it's a really it, it, i think it, andy it, was right about those gmd ones or whatever i think they're history yeah yeah the gmd <laughs> ones i think they're they were fail i think yeah, but that's anyway. my favorite. That's my favorite engine from Canada. So, yeah, we're, yeah. We're... go ahead, Boomer. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, uh, just having fun. Yeah, that's, and that's <laughs> and we are. We are. So, we got. Oh, we hey, got listen, about... I want to show you something quick. Okay, yeah. so uh, no sponsor. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Oh, so, Prizer. Somebody asked me a while ago, it was a good question. I wanted to uh, just quickly address how come you don't put figures in your. Like on your layout. Yeah. yeah. You know, like where's the figurines, right? Yeah. And okay, so that's a <laughs> that's a touchy subject, right? But you know, I have never like in HO, like O is a different story, and maybe S is too, but I've never found any that have really impressed me. And I always felt that if you can avoid putting figures on your layout, then why not if they don't add up? Like if they don't work for you, you know what I mean? And yeah. so I've never been able to find, like, I know some of my locomotives, like I usually take them all out. The reason why I took them out, like people will say it all the time. Hey man, where's the engineer? I like, I pull them out and toss them because I can't stand them. They look terrible, right? Like I just, you know, the shiny guy with the, you know, the pink shirt and, you know, <laughs> whatever, right? Like they just don't the, look. The unrealistic pose. Yeah, the unrealistic Yeah, they don't pose. look right. They look just, you know, toy-like or something. But anyway, so I found these in the back storage room of a hobby shop the other day yeah okay they're from germany and these sculpts are really nice like for ho and so basically yeah. you can modify these right you can yeah. modify them with copper wire you can cut the arms glue the wire in remove <clears throat> the arm putty it in a bit and they're really nice uh sharp sculpts yeah now, having said that, there is a uh, 3D print company. I think it's in the UK that are coming out with North American rail workers that are just beautiful. Yeah. I don't know the name, but anyway. 
And we got and mini prints too. They're right. They yeah, mini prints. Stuff. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Their mini prints is is some I I bought some of their stuff recently and the fidelity on the on the prints. They're nice, are, eh? Yeah, they're really good. The, oh, that's uh, great. The eat like the the birds. I got I got a I got some rail crew guys. I got some uh, birds of prey, so like hawks, eagles, those types of things. They the the resolution on it. They have the you can get down to the feathers and 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 see really? like, the different perforations in the feathers. And then wow, um, an eight Joe scale. Yeah, yeah, it's wow, it's incredible. They're they're really they're really 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 good stuff. Wow. Um, but yeah, I'd, Prizer, they've been around for a long time. I remember yeah, when I was have, growing yeah. up in the 90s and going through the Walther's catalog, and then they had some risque, you know, <laughs> yeah, figurines know, in yeah. there. I know some yeah. of them are, yeah. yeah. But I'm going to yeah. chop them up anyway, because I got a, look, I have a plan for these. I haven't, yeah. I'm working on another model I haven't said anything about yet, but I'm probably going to use a few of them in there. But Yeah, so... We we're through the short line, and I, there's a we we had a couple of show notes that we wanted a couple of topics that we wanted to talk about, and mm -hmm. then we talked a little bit about uh, you know the you know the can you imagine life without a camera that type of stuff, um, but the the personal psychology and and philosophy to help maintain passion I think that was the one of the things that we wanted to to possibly discuss. Um, and possibly get some good question um, and and uh, Q and A from the audience here. So I didn't know, uh, Boomer, if you wanted to essentially talk about uh, your 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 thoughts there. On, you know, a couple of different ideas um, around the the whole psychology of things, or even maybe you know what's what's going on with you know how how do you stay passionate or motivated or engaged yeah those are great questions aren't they because yeah. it's going to be because it's going to be different for for everybody i mean I, I, look i've always loved miniatures I, yeah i don't know what to say i i just since i was a kid i just was almost obsessed with miniatures right and then when the scratch building bug hit then I realized, wow, now I can make something that nobody else has. Yeah. Like, you know, I can make my own unique model. I mean, you can still do that when you kit bash too, right? You can put the, you know, replace the horn, like, because every locomotive is different. Like, there's something about that starting off just with the basic thing like that and then creating something, you know, that is unique, right? Sure. And it just sort of snowballs from there. And the whole art thing, like, I, like, I can't help but look at, you know, the model, like, like approach the model railroad as art because of the, you know, the, the collective whole of it. Right. Yeah. Right. Like I'm all about the, you know, the whole thing, like, um, like the diorama philosophy really engenders a believable setting that tells a story. Right. Yeah. So you build that story element into your layout and then you just start unfolding it like a storyboard and it, it pulls you in. Like, it's kind of like, you know, for me, like if you're going to write a book about the railroad that you want to build, like how would you write the book? Like if you had like a 500 page novel that you wanted to write or a 500 page fiction, you know, yeah. how would you write it? Like, would you, you know, I mean, you have a beginning and then you have, maybe you don't know what the ending is, but you tell a story and that's what right. keeps me in. Right. Like I'm infusing my, like my uh, youth and all my experiences around the SRY railroad into the river road now. Like I'm, like the freelance section. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like that. Yeah. Like that's where I'm at now in section two. Like I've already done the pro. Okay, I've done section one. I put a lot of emphasis on the prototype. Like the right. original footprint was 500 yards, so I squeezed it down. I think today I did a diagram on it um about the size because somebody had asked me uh how did you uh i did a map of it uh because it was a really good question about um you know the actual size of the site you know where the where the barge slip is oh yeah here it is so the actual like on section one that i modeled the actual whole length of the site was 500 yards right wow of, of that one big signature scene is what was 500 yards by 100 yards so you can see this the 
how I shrunk it down, right? The actual yeah. size of HO scale would have been 17 feet by three and a half feet. But see how I co compressed it to 10 by two? Oh, yeah. Right. right. So what did I compress? Well, I compressed, I took out the middle warehouse and I brought the brewery into the scene. Yep. I compressed the big warehouse, which is now Amazon. I didn't compress the barge slip too much because that I could fit in, but there's there's enough compression there to make it fit because I designed the whole layout, the footprint first. Like I wanted to know what space I had to tell my right. story, right? Like it seems backwards. Like some hmm. people would disagree with that in planning, but that's okay, right? But I knew that, like when I built the maquette model of it, like over a year ago, I said, okay, I have a, t a 10 by 12 room and this is my footprint and I want to design my bench underneath it. And I want to tell this story within 26 linear feet by two feet. And I want to do it about the SRY railroad. And I want to use four signature scenes. Yeah. But I can't get four in, but I'll get three in, right? Yep. And then I'm going to, and then the freelancing will be my license of what I really want to do or break the rules or whatever. Sure. To put into it, right? And to tell the story, like to tell my story about the SRY. Yeah, you know, that's my philosophy, right? You know. So that's 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 really interesting. So you didn't you didn't just you went in with a, a pretty developed plan before oh yeah. Yeah. I've so been that's planning it for like I planned River Road while I was building Glover Road. I was planning River Road. I never told anybody I was planning it on the side. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So and... you you knew that you were you were gonna evolve from Glover Road, um, which is a masterpiece on its own to to river road oh yeah i knew i was because glover road was this like i'll be honest like glover road is a whimsical you know amalgamation of you know just almost like a smorgasbordy kind of yeah you know just th throw it out there like just throw it on have fun with it learn get warmed up get you know develop some yeah. skills get the feel of things right Get yep. the creative juices going. Like, that's what it was. Like, if you look at it, I mean, come on. I mean, it is unique, though. Like, Lever Road was fun, and it came out, you know, it was sort of, okay, the grain elevator was kind of pushed in, and, you know, like the road, okay, Glover Road. But it didn't really, it wasn't a faithful representation of uh, uh, Milner or Glover Road like I want to do on Section 3. Right? Okay. Yeah. So, so the the grain elevator, and you've talked a, a bit about that in some of your videos. Um, yeah. You know, basically, really getting a, a good handle on the prototype and and the operation of it. Um, but I think I think we had Paul. He was he uh, he wanted to know. So, what do you what do you have planned for section two in the middle? Oh, okay. Okay, so right now, like I've already shown everybody the community now where the overpass is, right? And there's yeah, this exactly. mysterious, there's this mysterious <laughs> spot, right? Like I'll be showing yeah. pretty soon. Yep. Right. But here's the thing with the, okay, so I'm in the middle of section two. So yep. I've done section one, I've done section one, and I feel that primarily that's done. Like I feel closure, I really do. I feel that that I can leave it now and I can come back and make other detailed passes because there's a lot I have to do yet on that one, like yeah. barbed wire fence and chain link fence. There's, there's a lot of little gack stuff that I don't even want to touch right now. And then when I went into the, you know, like the uh, old growth section, like the Cedar Grove area there, where Big Bend is, where it turns past Axton Steel, now I have this parking lot there just before the overpass. That's yeah. the area right now that I'm working feverishly on like every day, but I'm not going to tell anybody yet because I don't. Okay. So I don't want to release everything too soon because it'll be boring. Like, yeah. Right. Like who yeah. wants to look at me gluing like little walls together and, you know, I mean, some might, but I want to get some content together before I release what's going on there. And I'll tell you, like, I'll give you a clue. It's completely freelance in terms of location. That's awesome. It only so, goes back to the prototype after uh, uh, the overpass that goes to the end of section two. That's going to be yeah. I Ipex Plastics, which I'm releasing the video after this 
the prototype video. That's what's going to be there. Okay. So yeah. let me ask you just one <laughs> thing ab about it before we, we move on to another question here. Did you use the same planning process, essentially going through and, and thinking through the how you were going to place the structures relative to the track and the different types of components that you wanted to put into your scene like you did on section one? Or is this just, yeah. I, I sit down there and I look at it and eh, this is what I'm going to do today type of thing. Are you more yeah. winging it on this one versus the other one? Okay, so I am winging it in terms of structures. Okay. Now the track plan, like in section two, like section two is actually, like if I had had 20 feet, like 20 linear feet, right? Yeah. Because that actual site would have been 17 feet. But if I had like, okay, so let's just say I had the whole 26 feet that I have that's curved like a horseshoe and I stretched it out totally straight. I would have been able to model right underneath the Alex Fraser bridge, like, like prototypically. Right. But what I did was, is I still took the prototypical track plan, which is three or four rails, like tracks. And I curved it and stretched it down section two, but I didn't want more warehouses. Like I didn't want, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I don't want to stretch yeah. the prototypical footprint to 20 feet. I've already given one third of the layout to it. Okay, because I have three chapters that I want to do. So that section, what's happening there is, yeah, I am kind of winging it a little bit, but I do have a yeah. track plan that was already designed before I did any structures. Right. Yeah, right? that's true. That's right. I remember that. So this is, I, I really like this analogy that you're you're kind of likening your, your model railroad to is almost like telling a story in different chapters or, you know, writing a book. I think I think that's kind of an interesting a way to look at it. Um, there was a, a, a question from, I think, Ralph Renzetti and, and Chris Bell. What happened to Glover Road? So is that is that gone? Okay, so no, it's not. Actually, Glover Road is hanging on the wall in the bedroom like a flap. Because uh, ah. you'll notice with my bench work, like with my bench work, like if I pulled my bench work down, like yeah. just like Glover Road, like Glover Road was uh, – two inches deep right the frames yeah but nothing protrudes below it it's a true shelf layout like in design wow. right so that means i can lay it down on a flat table and all the switches like the manual switch like everything works all the yeah. bus is tucked in like it's cut through the studs so river road is the same way nothing it's only i think river road is only uh yeah i think it was two and a half deep the uh three quarter studs and it's the yeah. same way right that's awesome so, so so yeah anyway you'll be able to preserve preserve it going or preserve it and and river road going forward then well it's not a disposable layout like like glover road wasn't disposable to me and nor is river road uh, there have been layouts in the past that were that I built. I sort of knew in the back of my mind that, yeah. and, it, and it and it came true. I never finished a couple of my own personal builds uh, that were just way too optimistic, and I didn't have a good plan. And it started <laughs> out good, but then it started. Yeah, where's this going, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I I've, had no. I've got a couple. Oh, I've yeah. got a couple questions. I got a couple yeah, questions on about Glover Road too. Have you have you been at looking at River Road? And gone and said, "Okay, I'm having a little creative block. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go rest on this for a little bit." And then you go into the be the other room where Glover Road's at, and you're like, "Look at it and like, hey, wait a minute. I remember I did it like that." And it's like, Ooh. "Okay, wait a minute. I can go back and do that on River Road." And that's so. Do you do you find that you could still draw inspiration from Glover Road? while you're building river road sure yeah that's a great question too mike yeah like i go back right because it's a bit of a blur like the channel like i'll be honest with you like the content is a little bit of a blur sometimes to me because i'm so like i don't know i guess i still have the energy for it but you know it's a lot of work right like it takes 20 hours to edit one like one 10 minute video like it's 20 wow. hours post. <laughs> like it's 20 hours post editing like that's just for a 10 minute video, right? So if I do wow. a like a one hour tutorial, it's 30 hours editing. Right? Wow. But, 
but I'm really disciplined and structured though. That's just something I built in. Maybe it's a generational thing too. Like just that work kind of thing. Like this is where people say, well, you know, you're supposed to have fun. Believe me, I'm having a lot of fun. Yeah, right. Believe me, I am because I know how to, right? But I also work very hard and the rewards are big, right? But, you know, when it comes to like section two, the block that you mentioned, Mike, like I am a little bit blocked at the overpass. But I have that section right before it that I'm working feverishly on. It might change six times, seven times, like before I implement it. But I'm building the buildings, though. I know what I'm building. I've already drafted them. In fact, I'll probably be uploading a drafting uh, content piece on where I'm going with some stuff. But I'm going to build those models because I love to build. But yeah. whether they're going to go in the way I see now, I don't know yet. So it is changed. it different? Here's the magic question. I'm, I know we're going to find out. <laughs> but is it different from the video you did about the positioning of the overpass where you were showing like how you could position the overpass right, yeah. with it with that little <laughs> and i know and i know you know exactly what i'm talking about with yeah, those yeah, pictures yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay so the so overpass is not gonna move like it'll probably move east like further down a little bit more if it like it's not gonna move back towards like cedar grove like by big ben there like that's that grove there i just tended mm, to right. call cedar, cedar grove right right because there's a parking lot in there and I'm going from rural to urban, yeah, right, and then back to rural. So the middle of section two is going to have a more of an urban feel, like New Westminster, the architecture, yeah. right? Like, like I can't leave New West out. Like I got to put something in there, right? I got to put something in there. So I went on a photo op, right, and I went down in the dregs, the back. Like I should have packed a gun, but anyway. <laughs> I went down. No, no, really, right? You go down there by the tracks, like like down in New West in those back alleys. It's a little areas, seedy. Right? It gets a little hairy back there. there. It's like, you know, I had my van with the keys and it's still running, right? But <laughs> banging off. Like there's an old Woodworks down there. There's buildings down there that are just the character, the ooze character, and they're right by the tracks. Yeah. So the overpass and the tracks and what I'm building works tentatively. Like it does work. Like it is prototypically influenced. But I'm going to use artistic license to make it all work in that area. So it's going to be, you know, like another signature scene. Because section one is really a, a couple of signature scenes, but based on one big prototypical footprint. But section two is going to be more, a little more whimsical kind of transition from the forested scene just before the overpass. And then on the other side of the overpass, that's a chapter break. That's going to be Ipex Plastics. I'm pretty settled on that. Yeah, and that's so. going to be more back towards the prototype stuff. Yeah, back to more pro prototype. And then section three will be, be you know, my first love, which is uh, the Milner Grain Elevator Glover Road, right? That's like, that has to be redone. Like that bin, like there's three more bins that I have to build like that. Like I really want to devote that last section. And then beyond that, I have more space. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm right? just looking at I'm just looking at a question that pulls by a model works. Right? It's got to yeah. be there, <laughs> right? And then the ferry, like I'll be going back to section one because remember the you know the carrier princess. Look at Google carrier princess, you'll find SRY picks. Google oh, carrier boy. princess, right? I'm building the carrier princess, the first like a facade, like a offloading, right? Cause I can't build the whole ferry. It'll go out the bedroom door, but um, I'm going to build the first part for the staging for the removal staging, but I'm oh, doing wow. that, that ferry, the front of it I've, out of oh, quarter inch plywood and evergreen plastic. So amazing. I I've always wanted to build it like an, an ore boat, like an, one of those ore freighters, but I, I don't have a airplane hanger to do it. And it's, it's just be a massive right. undertaking. Oh man. I can't. Hey, uh, yeah, hey, Andy. Andy. Yeah. Asking you sh if we shall. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so does that answer Paul's question? <laughs> yeah. How do you stay motivated? Yeah. There's the that. carrier. There's the carrier princess right there. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So that that's a CP that, library. Yeah, like that's going to be part of uh, River Road. That's a significant part that I have plans for it. I have to draft first, though. But I have all my photo reference now. And I'm going to draft, like, see where the halfway of the, 
like I'm going to be, be modeling the first third of it. And it's going to pull up to the barge slip and then I'll have cassette that will come out of it, like out the back. With, oh, so with... this portion right here where the wings are would be a cassette? Yeah, like and I'm then... going to model, like uh, just look at the halfway point of that ferry and then go about another halfway, about 30% of the front I'm going to model, which will hold three or four cars like on each track, right? Oh, nice. Mm. And that way I can pull that up and then I'm going to design in a slider that comes out on the bottom of the layout because it's only two inches deep, so it'll work for me. And it's solidly built, very solid. And it'll slide out and support the rear part of the ferry. So it'll it'll just slide right up to the slip. And then I have the three-way that's functional on the ramp. So I'll be able to use that or go in from the three tracks that are on the slip, you see. And those are all the, you know, the cars, box cars, grain, probably fuels. So that's a whole other dimension, right? Yeah. To the layout. It's a good way to introduce staging to a layout if you wanted yeah. to. So late night model railroad comes in and says, how many uh, rail cars deep can you stage then? Well, if they're 50 footers, it's probably four on each track. So that's wow. 12, 12 in total. But it's a short line. Like, yeah. you know, like you see them whipping down the track with a, a Jeep 9 and two SW 900s and one box car. They're taken to a customer. Yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> like an express load or something. You know, they, they do it all the time. Like they MU with one car all the time on this railway. So who says you can't switch with six axles, right? Or three MU locomotives, two box cars. It's a shelf layout. You know? Yeah, that's and and if you if you need any uh um prototypical reference i um where, where i live here in wisconsin um the the local regional railroad the wisconsin southern uh was switching out a plastics plant with two sd 60s yeah you there know? you go so so yes it's it is possible they can they bring the bring the big brutes in to they to do, do it all the time and then, you know, and then there's the time and then there's they me. Do it all the time and, and then, then there's, there's me. Mike. I've got and there's me. I've got to drag 40 flipping loaded barley cars up a hill with one GP9. Yeah. Yeah. SRY uh, doesn't do that, man. They don't mess around. They don't mess they, <laughs> No. No, they don't. Like they'll run three, like uh the poor three engine. SW 900s, like or two with a Jeep 9, or they'll run two uh SD 38s. Like the other day when I caught the uh plastic switch, it was uh SD38 and their new re refurbished SD35. Yeah. Turbocharged too. I think the SD35 is turbocharged. I'm pretty sure I could hear it. It was yeah, SD35 should be should be oh, a turbo. Yeah. Which, which is again which is a departure because on the video it'll blow you away. I had my yeah. phone. Do you know that phones really? are unbelievable? F phones blow me away, right? Cuz I use yeah. a really you know, pretty decent Nikon camera for all my content. But I just happened to have my phone one day. I was driving on Duncan Way. I went, oh, my goodness, I can't believe it. They're, they're here, right? Yeah. So I pulled out my phone, and the guys kind of know me. And I was, you know, I know how to move around the area. And I couldn't believe the video. When I got home, I was, I was falling out of my chair. I thought, I can't believe it's this good. So I just right away, I went into and did this video. It took me six hours or seven, eight hours to edit it. And it's nine minutes long. And... It's just the greatest. Talk. So you talk about passion, Andy, right? There it is. Yeah. I got yeah. my Ipex Plastics That's cool. passion right there. Wow. Yeah. It's it's cool that you know you 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 just drive you're driving along and all of a sudden you get that inspiration, you know, to to really you know dive into <laughs> to a modeling project. Late night model railroad. He's he's got a couple more questions there. Uh, what's yeah, the main one. re? Why, why do they mu so often just to pull one car? Because you know why? Because they do turns, right? They go out to Chilliwac, they go to Langley Turn, and there's always a customer, right? And they do on-call stuff. Like they have, like they're really big on the service. Like you have to be. If you charge your own rates, you better be good. Yeah, You, know, you right. better be on time. And uh, they're not going to get caught with one switcher anywhere. And even in their yard, they use a slug, you know? So... Get moving. They don't mess around like you say, right? No, they don't. I don't know how they I think they make most of their revenue off the automotive, but like they must because that, that's kind of that's kind of what 
in my re- when I was researching for the short line of the show, that seemed like it was a big deal. Like all that automotive movement was like a huge deal for it the is, railroad. Yeah, you yeah, know? that's their main main source of revenue. Oh, and also like they interchange with BNSF, CNCP, and they do all their little sideshow like deliveries too, right? Right. So, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I think that all the industries are. I think you got to be really good. Like you have a, have good people, all right? Yeah, uh, you know, like running the sh- like doing your sales and service and yeah. yeah. But they're really unique railroad. They really are, and the fact that they have that kind of history and that they've been running that long um, and they still like they look like they're running strong. You know, I mean, if they're <laughs> painting and rebuilding locomotives, Mike, they must have money, right? Yeah, well, either that or they're gonna sell. That's always the thing on the railroad. If they start painting stuff, that something that something bad's about to happen. They're gonna <laughs> they're, sell. They're it. gonna sell it, oh, especially yeah. if, they, well, if they. Maybe they're gonna sell the SD thirty five back to Montana. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> if they if they end up painting depots, you know, bad things are on the horizon. Yeah, they don't right, do it yeah. just for the. At least on the class ones, that's usually the way it is. Yeah. So I wanted to to give the the uh, folks in the chat here. We're kind of winding down, Boomer. Of course, if you know we want to uh, carry on with any other topics that you want to touch on, feel free to. But I did want to give the opportunity for the folks in the chat uh, to interact with you a little bit. Um, if you if you have any questions about Boomer, can you just give me kinda... one minute here. I'll just be right yeah. back. Give me one minute and, and you'll have some yeah. questions. Yeah, and we'll we'll go ahead and uh, field uh, uh, questions from the audience about uh, his modeling techniques, or if we want to learn more about the SRY, which we've covered quite a bit of ground here tonight um, <laughs> on that. And I I'm just I it's, I think there it's was been like a, a scrolling it's like a scrolling short line of the show the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, no. I think it was. Uh, well, let's see here, maybe it was Cloverdale Rail. Uh, says he he he, uh, he loves how Andy can't stop smiling and I've been I've just been like you know uh you know like this the whole show you know just listening <laughs> I know. listening intently to to what's what's being said it's just it's been a fantastic uh, and I've been uh, trying my so hardest far. not to I've been trying my hardest not to fanboy out also so it's yeah like, it's, it's, like... it's it's this is what I am I mean you know I'm not gonna apologize for for just nope, not here, one bit you know, yeah like this but I did see somebody um, asked a question about uh, if if he has explained something about the uh, matte medium. Matte medium, I, right? Yeah, about matte medium. I don't want to miss it. He said so. It's uh, and, and, and I'm sure that'll come up. Matte medium. It's uh, right. it is his seems to be his go to. Uh, ah, speak of the devil. Look at that. He's back. Uh, he's back. Okay. Um, so, so Mark, Mark Reed uh, has a question for you, Boomer, if you'd be so kind to take it is, have you ever thought about writing a book on the art of the railroading? (laughs) Well, you know, a lot of people are asking that and, uh, I am taking a lot of notes. Like I have a lot of notes. Sure. Years of notes and, uh, and then they get revised and outdated and so on. But I have pretty much written the introduction <laughs> yeah through, through the last year yeah <laughs> you know right you know it's interesting yeah. though you know we've moved it's funny how people ask about books like i'm all for books I, I have a massive book collection i love to read but you know since social media you know has i think everybody can relate to that like social media is a force right isn't it it certainly right? is yeah it's like anybody is. out there that has a degree knows about reading and and must admit that after they got their degree, they didn't read another book for two years. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you know, yeah. But yeah, it's, book. Okay, maybe, 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 maybe. Yeah. All right. And then uh, let's see here. Santa Ana Industrial Lead says uh, the his book is yeah. his, his YouTube channel. Um, let's see here. For now, I guess. Yeah. Um, so Otter Creek says, uh, do you do a detailed drawing of scratch builds uh, before you begin building? Okay, that's a good question. Um, so I've mentioned drawings previously and talked yep. about it in, in previous content, and I've used the term napkin drawing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. And for those of you, like I've explained it, but let me just quickly give you what that means. So when I worked in film, uh, when we were going to, like, uh, we had a script, we had a storyboard or whatever, that, and I worked in construction. So 
the art department would have the official drawings, but they wouldn't release them right away. So we were told by the coordinator, go get the photos right now and do a napkin drawing, right? Like just draw it from the photo and start building it right away. And when the drawings finally get released, then we can revise the model or whatever, you know? Yeah. So, so I adopted that method. So I don't, I only draft, like, like do a rough draft most of the time. And yeah. then I sort out all the details as I'm building the model, because I don't know like what the details are going to be like always on the drawing, unless you build the model and then you reverse engineer the drawing, right? Like once you finish the model, then you have to go back and redraft the whole thing. If you want to build another model from it or get, or publish it, let's say, but that's kind of how it works. Like the, the buildings that I'm working on right now, there's, there's two featured buildings and some background ones. And the one I'm working on right now that I'm deep into, I did a just beyond a napkin drawing, a little more extensive, but yeah. the one that I'm building after that one, and I'm not going to say what it is yet. I'm doing a fairly detailed building of the facade of just the front of the building because the sides are not or nothing really, but it's the front. So that one I am. So it depends on the building and it depends on what I want to feature on the model. Like if I feel it's important, then, then I, I might, but you still end up, you know, wasting a lot of time drawing stuff. You don't even know if you're going to build. So like, like with the brewery building, like that you did in the first section that how many, how many renditions of napkin drawings went through that before okay, you so settled I just did on one, one, one. Oh, one, really? One. Just yeah, one. Like, yeah. Like one, like I took all the photographs and then I, well, actually a couple, but yeah, napkins, a big pen. And then I, yeah. And then I realized that it's like, you know, the prototype is like 80 yards long, let's say, but I, my model's only 50 yards. So I got to squeeze all the gack or the right. details in mm -hmm. a bit, right? Yep. But you can't really tell, though, because if you capture the spirit of the building, right, like that's what's important. Unless it's a model in a jury show, I'm not interested. Like if hmm. you, you know, like if I, like I've been there, I don't want to do that stuff anymore. I really don't. All the power to people that do it, and I encourage it. It's the best way to you know, to sharpen your skills. And it's a definite uh, significant part of the hobby to build from a plan, but I don't have any blueprints for this build. None. Hmm. Like I didn't have the resources to get them like the buildings that I wanted to build. Right. So the only one that knows is me, right. <laughs> you don't know <laughs> unless I told you. Right. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> right. All right. You can see that. that yeah. There is brick. Space. Yeah. Brick. Yeah. There's a uh, brick in the building I'm working on right now. Cool. So let's see here. Bernard comes in and says, uh, what inspirational experiences did aviation bring to the table for you? Wow. That's an interesting question. Well, you know, I used to build big scale model RC aircraft, right? Like after I got out of the oh. movies uh, in, in, I guess, 2009, 2008, 2009, 2010, because I was into radio control, because that was one of the things as a model maker, most guys knew. Uh, and then electric motors were coming on the scene with brushless motors. So I was building big, big scale models. I worked in the aviation for a while, yeah. loved aircraft, built lots of big flying models, stuff like that. So it really helped my skills with wood. So that's why I use a lot of balsa wood still. Well, there you, you notice go. that? Like yep. wood, because yeah. yep. I feel comfortable and confident with wood. And wood is really strong. Like wood is really a really good building medium, right? Yes, it like is. It's something you should have in your kit. And if you're a carpenter too, like if you have carpentry skills, you're already a model maker and you don't even know it, right? Because yes. you can read plans. Like I think yep. you are, Andy, right? Yeah, I I used to work construction and do fine uh, scale, for, or not scale furniture, but I used to build, I still build furniture um you know woodworking is another yeah. hobby of mine so some yeah, of the best it's... model makers i met were carpenters first they're finished carpenters they built houses they built cabinets and they just took a plan and said hey this is hey there's no difference here it's just a plan it's just a smaller right. scale yeah you know so you learn to read a plan in elevation and you, you can cut and measure you, that's the beginning and a, and a flat like a building flat is the best place to start because you're only building a flat wall right right like some doors, yep. windows. And once you start putting doors and windows on a flat, watch what happens. You just begin to grow and you, you build more elaborate models and there'll be one-offs in unique, right? 
So, and they'll fit your layout the way you want it. Kits are good too. There's nothing wrong with kits. Yeah. Nothing, nothing wrong with them. You know, they, there's a question that came in. Do you get, do you, uh, if, if brass is the only way to go, um, to get equipment on your layout, do you go that route or do you like to build your own? Uh, listen, brass is great. Like I used to custom paint brass, right. For clients that could afford it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, like I had a few brass locomotives too that I've kicked in myself. I wish I never sold like some ON3, like narrow gauge, like Denver Rio Grande. I had some rare pieces yeah. because I had clients and they could get it for me. Right. And, uh, you know, so, but I think I sold all that stuff off, but you can't have everything. You gotta, you know, it's funny too, right? Like, I think I mentioned too, if I can say it, that I didn't want to sit, people get the wrong impression about, you know, how I said, if you can't be faithful to the model railroad, then, you know, right. You know, like yep, yep. stop having affairs with other hobbies. Like there's only so much time in the day. Right? Yes. Like if you want to build an empire, like I get a kick out of people that want to build a, you know, big railroad. Right. But they don't, don't count look the at cost the guy of... behind it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they don't No, But Andy, like you're raising a family too. Right. Right. So, so I get that, but you know, um, like model railroads, like count the cost, man, on the time. Like the money doesn't matter because you just subsidize it along the way and you don't feel it because you love it, right? And that's right. what everybody does. But there's a time factor, you know, involved, right? Like not only is there, you need to keep the passion up, which I do through story, yeah. right? Because I know the story and I want to see the story. I want to see the movie I make, right? That kind of thing. Right. I, I want to see it. But I have days where, like Mike said, oh, jeez. <laughs> having a bit of trouble, having a bit of trouble here, right? Right. And I walk away. I walk away. I close the door. I close the door and I leave for a couple of days, and then I read up on the railroad that I'm modeling or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. Probably. Count the cost, the time. Yeah, the count. And right. And um, Boomer, or excuse me, Ralph says, uh, you know, how, how do you stave off burnout? I think he just kind of <laughs> touched on it. <laughs> Well, okay, so so you know what I did was I fired all my clients. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Stop. stop I just stop said no more not building for, other... for you anymore. That's it. Yeah. I'm done, right? I'm moving on. Thank you. This is the last one. Um, and then I just did the odd one, though, because it's like, you know, you can't fully get away from it. But you have to be very careful. Like, I just told a guy, like, a couple of weeks ago, uh, he wanted to meet a custom paint two end scale cn locomotives i painted for him before i ran mm -hmm. into him i was i had a handful of hobby glue and, <laughs> and plastic and there he was hey man i got two undex man undex easy for you right and i said you know what i'd love to do it but i'm sorry i'm too busy yeah i had to say no do i think about it sure i could bang up but no because that adds up and more and more so but if you want to do you know what you do and you have a passion for it to anybody that's getting into it, then focus on that and do it well. Yeah. And think, think about those other things like the gun club and the archery club and the fly tying. And like, do you really have time for all that? I don't know. I don't custom painting, fishing lures, <laughs> that type of They're, stuff. Yeah, what, right. what am I doing? What I am have I a doing, fly Boomer? box too, Andy. I got a fly yeah. box back here too. <laughs> yeah. But I don't do it anymore. I'm just focused on on River Road. And yeah. uh, and that's it. I got rid of all my model, like my radio control, like all that stuff is long gone. But yeah, I, I got rid of all of it. So I just focus on the model railroad thing now and I love it. And yeah. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And then of course with the channel too, right? Anyone that yeah. creates content knows. Like the algorithm is ruthless. I'll have you it's, know. Yeah. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> it's, right? it can you make a, a living at it? Is. Here's a good one. I bet you a lot of people don't ask about because a lot of model railroad channels, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like everybody has a bunch bookmarked, don't you? I have I two do. of them. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, there's people are trying to make money. I mean, not everybody's going to be Luke Toan. No. You know, Luke. I mean, Luke Tone is a talented guy, but he also came in at the right time. And he knows, like, he has a plan, and he knows he has a form of entertainment. He's he's highly gifted, talented modeler. Yep. 
I used to do all that stuff too, but there was no, but there was no social media. We didn't have any of that. It was just word of mouth. Like, you know, right. There was no, man, if I had social media back then, I'd be retired somewhere down in the Bahamas, you know, (laughs) right. No, really. When you think about it, right. Like you think of the people that, like, if you think that if somebody has a million subscribers and they're current, that's like the channel's current. I'll tell you right now, they're doing pretty good. Yeah. They're making good money, you know. Yeah. But they're working hard, though. You know, it's Luke not Tone easy works work. hard. He's it's a not... pilot, yeah. I think, too, on the side. Right. Oh, Luke Luke Tone? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah he, he's a, what is it, a short, uh, short-haul short pilot, I think. He flies commuter planes. Oh, nice. Yeah. But it's, he's it's good amazing. too. He knows the art of the diorama. Like he understands he it, right? Like, can you imagine if he just decided to build a model railroad, like just put it all in, like to go all in and uh, build uh, like a 26 foot or 30 foot long model railroad and apply all that skill that he has into a story? Can you imagine what that would be like? Like a super diorama? It would be unreal. And he's young too. It's, and with all the technology that he incorporates too, it's a little, I don't know. It's, I get, I, I, I'm certainly oh, yeah, jealous okay. of him with his automation yeah. and, and yeah. his little guys that ride the bikes around and the cars that do all that. And oh, right. Yeah. 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 yeah little, I know that's the kind of cutesy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the laser cutters and the 3Ds, you know what? I say to anybody that has laser cutters, 3D, go for it, man, because that's mm. where the future of the hobby is going. And if you're in that learning curve, do it. Me, it's too late for me. I'm old school, man. Like I could sculpt a moose faster than probably faster than the 3D printer could do it. Like, yeah, really, I almost, like if I really I, wanted to, right? I almost because burned I'm dinner because so of you times. that way. I you almost know, burned just... dinner the other night because of that video. <laughs> Thanks a lot, by the way. I was like no, watching. I'm like, so... what smells? I'm like, look. Oh. <laughs> I just like the old school way. You know, I'm just like I'm a boomer, right? I'm like I'm washed up almost. Oh. You know, <laughs> oh yeah, real, yep. real watch. Yeah, I'm yep. not man. If I could be like, if I was 20 again or 25 with social media and and all the technology, oh my goodness, man! I'm telling you, the opportunity for entrepreneurship is off the charts right now That's for young true. people. It yeah. really is. I mean, you guys know the tech, right? Yeah, you're born yeah. into it. Yeah, I had to learn it when I was. Like the first computer I bought, I was 26 years old. It was a 286. Hmm. And it was a, I, I threw away my $700 typewriter and, and bought a, you know, a PC, right? But you were born into it. Like the social media, like YouTube right now, like they're probably the best, uh, one of the best, I think, if not the uh, best, like video uh, platforms in the world. I agree with that. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's my, it's my go-to for entertainment as well. Like I'll watch sports and all sorts of other stuff on here. Yeah. Outside of model railroading stuff. And that's for me, it it curates everything that I need. I mean, look how much you can learn from it. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, for me, like I want to give back, like, like nobody really asked me, why do you do the channel? Right. Is it for the money? No, I don't really get much really, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't need it really. It's not that much, right? I do it because I want to give it back because I want modelers like you and all the young generation to fully like embrace it and and reap the rewards from it. I want to give away every trick I know and everything because you know why? Because like people taught me, people took me under their wing and they told me, hey man, this is how we do this. This is how you do it. Why? Because you'll be rewarded for your skill set and you'll get great fulfillment out of it, right? And because we're all creative, like we all, all are, like if you write a note, that's a form of creativity. So how you write it. And if you model, you're creative. So we all have that in us, in the human sentient, which is a beautiful thing. And I'm a big proponent of encouraging creativity at whatever you do, right? Because especially today, right? That's true. And you can share it with your family. Like model railroading, like what a beautiful family hobby to get your yeah. kid. I mean, maybe your kids into it. I don't know, but to get them involved in it yeah, is a good my, thing. My son and I were down here last night running trains, you know, and that was, it was, you know, a great hour, hour and a half that we had just hanging out. Does he enjoy it? Train. He loves it. He 
absolutely loves it. And he's six years old and, you know, I have the ESU command system, hashtag not sponsored. He, he can run it, you know, we're doing switching moves and all that good stuff. And he's, you know, he's starting to get the basic concepts down and he absolutely loves it. And yeah, he crazy. loves, he loves the, he, he loves to see the, I guess the, the trains move around. He loves the, the science in, in it now with the DCC. Oh, yeah. And he just loves the fact that he can hit a button and make a horn go and the ditch lights come on and all that fun stuff. But I also drag him around town when the train's in town and he yeah. looks at the prototype and he just waving at the engineers and the crew. And he just is absolutely enamored with, with railroads and, and model railroading. And then he sees what I'm doing here with the, the, I guess the scene behind me and he's like, Oh, that's so cool that you painted that. And then, so he, I give him a piece of canvas and then he starts trying to replicate it. It's just, <laughs> I just let him go. And he's having, he's having so much fun with it. That's cool. Yeah. It's, it's see, I went the opposite direction because I work, <laughs> because I work for the railroad. <laughs> Mike, yeah, right. I, I, that's I, I, because I work for the railroad, I wanted my kids to not work for the railroad. I didn't want my kids to be enamored with it. So I, oh, yeah. I never encouraged them to come down and help me with anything, do this and that. And the next thing they were in sports, they were doing all that stuff. Now they're both out of the house and, you know, they're grown. One's getting married. One's a senior at college, you know? And so now that they'll see me do something and they'll come out and say, okay, how'd you do that? All right. Can I do, if I needed to do this, what would I use? Now they're starting to ask questions. And so now that they're older and I know that they're say, safely not going to be in the railroad, <laughs> work for the railroad, <laughs> they, they, they start asking, they're asking me questions and I'll be like, well, here, let's, I'll show you here. This is what we do. Well, that's kind of cool. That comes in pretty handy. Well, yeah. I said, yeah. Good. Okay. So I need this, this, and this. I said, yeah. The next thing you know, I'm getting yelled at by their, girlfriend or something what do you tell them to do this for you know no but it's it's uh it's it's interesting because it, you know there's it, it's, kids of all ages are sponges mm -hmm. i'm i'm 52 i'm a sponge you know not because i'm overweight thanks a lot all my friends out there that know me but Hi. it's uh, but it's 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 because of the fact that I have a I have a passion to learn knowledge. I want to learn these things. And I think that you truly don't start to lose passion for what you're doing until you start to lose the passion to want to learn. Yeah. You know, and and once you lose that, doesn't matter what age you are, then it's just kind of ball game. You're just you're all done. You might as well just yeah. pack pack up shop and forget about it, you know. Then you just become an old curmudgeon then. <laughs> Yeah, I, learning, like constantly learning, like learning, like I'm still learning about the railroad, like, you know, like operations, for example, like I'm looking more into that now and chasing the prototype a bit more because I kind of got away from it. Uh, still learning stuff about modeling too, right? Like just this, it, that's a, again, the beauty of the model railroad is you can't really know it all. Like there's just no way, there's just no, like the, like the longer you're in it, the more you realize you don't know. You know, it's just a, yeah. an incredible and, and the problem solving, the challenges and the problem. That's why it's good for kids, because it teaches them how to solve problems. Because life yep, is absolutely problems, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and uh, you know that when you lay the track down and you're picturing your Jeep nine going down and then you do it and it doesn't go. For some reason. Oh, why did the glue? I wasn't thinking when I put that cork down, the track's supposed to go there. You know, it goes on and on like this. So you got to solve it right it's not the fun part yeah. but you got to solve it to get the reward and, and that's uh, just it it's the accomplishment when when you get it running yeah when you get it yeah. running yeah. yeah yeah it's hey man it's, i enjoy it too right like i don't run that much really to be honest with you because because i'm so focused on building right but yeah. i love to run trains like on a given day like you know if i've had a hard day like at my regular job part-time and you know and i just come home and i just you know run the Jeep down with one car and I go down yeah. to the brewery and then slide it in. And that's ah, just, you know, like 10 minutes, 10 yeah. or 15 minutes and, and I'm good. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, 
it's, I, it's 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 almost fun too, you know, like to just come down and and let's see if how slow I can run the locomotive on speed step one, and let's see if it makes it all the way <laughs> makes it all the way around the layout without shutting yeah. off, you know. It like takes that's an hour to go eight yeah. feet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with, right. With the DCC, it does so. Yeah, like yeah. You, know, like you, you can, can literally oh, yeah. program it to run like. Like I've ran it from the brewery down to Big Ben, and it took forty minutes one time. I got it to go. Holy wow. cow! Forty minutes with my low sound like program on the speed step really low. Yeah. Like on my switcher, my Atlas switcher, which is my best running locomotive. It just that thing will run through two lines in the sand. That that that, like, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding you. Like that, like that locomotive will run on anything where other locomotives yeah. won't. Right. Incredible yeah. little thing, you know, and, you know, again, with trains, like you notice that with trains, like you can have five, six, seven, eight, 12, 12 model locomotives, right. That you yep. like to you know, use. And there's always going to be one or two favorites that just, you know, like maybe not the one that you want to like the most, but it runs the best. Right. Right. You know? Right. You notice that? Like they're all yeah. uniquely yep. different. Right. Yep. Yeah. Like I, I have an Atlas uh, SD35, and I wanted that to be my favorite locomotive, and it it runs like trash, so I don't <laughs> use it anymore. Yeah, I know it sucks, eh? Uh, right? Yeah, and it just and it's I wanted it I wanted it to be that so bad, but yeah, it's you know, it's yeah, it's, it's it's funny that that you have you have your stinkers that you just kind of have on the at the roundhouse for show, and then you have <laughs> yeah. your your yeah. hard workers that you bring out yeah. you know, when it's operating time. That's funny. And you know, my SD38, my Cato, beautiful yeah. running. Like when it's cruising, it's silky smooth. But every time I leave from, you know, from a dead stop, it has this little shudder to it. Like this yeah. little, very, just as it gets up to speed, right? Yeah. It just does a little bit of a kind of a, you know, right? Very, very subtle. But man, that little S or that MP15, that thing. Yeah. I just, Get it one, like step one, like one tenth of one, and I have to wait five minutes. Oh, it is moving, you know, just crawling. Yeah, just crawling yeah. along. Amazing. The love of trains, eh? Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. So, I, get the, I just love it. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. Hobby, man. It's a great <laughs> hobby we share. It's just got to be the best hobby in the world. I know that sounds cliche, but I mean, I've touched so many uh, facets of of art and hobbies and i have to say that you know the model railroad is the is the best most expressive deepest diversified collectively whole hobby there is like in community like for people and just yeah um family and even solo like even lone wolf person club yeah i mean think yep. about it right what a what a what a great hobby we share isn't it it's oh yeah i love it yeah, it's, I absolutely it's, a, love it. it's it's been everything for me, you know. Honestly, yeah. it actually has, you know. And you're a real like, railroader, right, Mike? Like you were the real deal, and 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 yet you like it or you love it. Like that's interesting to me. I, right. you know, it's the the weird part about it is, is I can't stand anything that's going on nowadays. But like, I have a GP nine R at at work is what I'm using. It's a GP nine. I'm running that. I saw a Green Bay and Western boxcar come into my yard the other day. I got all, I got all, I'm like, okay, how can I figure out how can I get over to that boxcar and, and get some pictures of the side or at least go and find out because they're, because wow. a Green Bay and Western always stamped <clears throat> in, into the steel side frame. They always stamped the number of the car in there. So oh, they could really? find out, oh yeah. So they could find the original number of the car just by looking at the side sill wow. of the car. So I'm like, okay, I got to get over there and do that. And, of course, I wanted to take a picture, and my camera went, battery was dead. And I'm like, oh, this is just great. So now I got my camera charger with me. So it's – it's, I I just – I look for new things to try to implement into what I'm doing now yeah. that are from 30 years ago, 20 years ago, you know. Yeah. And – or that's 30 years or more, you know, and there's plenty out there. Actually, there's a lot out there. That's real old stuff still sitting around. If you know where to look, 
you know, but yeah, it's right. neat hearing your testimony as a real uh, railroad dude because <laughs> I would have thought that oh, the last thing you'd think of was you know when you got home after a hard day's work, right? Like we romance it, you know the you know the model railroader. Like I would say that I romance it. I mean, I I get close to it, but not the real, not like you. And I romance it quite a bit, but you like when you come home after you know a, a rough day or whatever you. What do you do? Work on your model railroad for a couple hours? Well, I, sometimes, it, sometimes it's just pure decompression. It, it's I come down here because I can sit and, uh, like my depot here. I'm gonna grab it without drinking my thing. Like my depot that I've got right here. Oh yeah, I've been work, yeah, I've been nice. working on it. You know, this is a kit. Yeah, that's obviously. nice. It's a, it's a kit. I've been kind of missing. Oh, and, Andy gave. I I was kind of struggling with the how I wanted to do the roof. Because I wanted to get it weathered and everything before I put the glass in or the the clear in, so I came up with a way of doing the roof and I figured out how to do it nice. and still have yeah. all the stuff. All That's in. a really good, really good way that you did that to lift the roof off. You know, to yeah, spend that extra thanks. work like that, so it does that. That's nice. Yeah, thanks. It, it but that was last night. Those, well, I'm not sure the the roof supports. That was an hour and a half it took me to put all the roof supports on there. And I just had, <laughs> believe it or not, I actually had red green streaming on YouTube <laughs> on, on the, in the background because I love red green. And yeah. so uh, I just. Yeah, he's I'm, a funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm, I have that red Canadian green. Sitting, humor, right? <laughs> yeah, right. I got red green going in the background and I'm just sitting here doing this. I'm not thinking about work. I'm nice. thinking about yeah. making sure these are square, making sure this is this. My mind is not on any, wasn't on anything. It was just complete decompression for me. Yeah. And um, I, I, I view this as a hobby, not an extension of what I do for a living. Um, you know, yeah. that's right. You know, that's yeah. That's uh, an interesting thing that you raised there, right? Because I do it as a hobby, but guess what? A little bit, a little bit pulled me back in, right? Because of the channel. Yep. Yeah. Because I want to main, because I want to maintain the revenue, so I have to keep creating content. But I love, love doing it though, and I have a yeah. plan. And if I stick to my plan, it, it, it's okay. I'm not, you know, I'm not burning out from it. But yeah, it's not funny. Yeah, I know. It's a, that's a double edged sword. Eh? Yeah. You know it, the it, hobby it, business thing. Yeah, but at work, I'm sitting here going, I'm I'm sitting here going, I don't know whoever kind of looked got me doing this, but all of a sudden I look down and I'm like, hey, that's that's a different shade of gray. And I'm like, take my boot and I'm kicking it around a little bit. I'm like, huh. Well, you know what? I got an old salsa jar sitting in my locker that's all cleaned up. <laughs> Wanted to bring some of that home. Next thing you know, I'm filtering it for my ballast. Right. Thank, right out of the thank, air. It's, a unique, right it's got a unique patina to it too. Right? Yeah, yeah it's been a very used, and then I'm, <laughs> and I was asking Andy the other day. I was cleaning out my stand-up garden. I'm like, hey, is it okay to use garden dirt sifted for yeah. the layout? <laughs> yeah. Sure, why I not? Do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Know. I just make sure that it's sterilized though. Like yeah. I soak it with uh, isopropyl. Everything does. It kills every kills all it the organisms. Kills organism. everything. It kills, it kills everything. Yep. Everything on. And it's medicinal too, right? If you get it on your skin, it won't hurt you. Yeah, right. That's true. So when I had my finger, which is <clears throat> oh yeah, how's that yeah. going? By the way, that's how, that's how they cleaned it. Oh, good. I just keep a band aid on it so I don't whack it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like you know, don't want to catch it on something. It. Yeah, because it's still tender, eh? But uh, but I'm able to model with it now. But that was a, a bit of a dicey thing that bit me there, but. It's a little reminder. I was still trying to figure out yeah. the dynamics of how that knife how you, spun around. How did that? How did you go from this finger here to having it sp spin around to hit yeah, your like, other uh, palm? I was like loaded up like this, and yeah, and it slipped through the window or, or the door opening of the model, and it it somehow it it caught it, and and, and just the g force of the thing flipping around stuck into this finger <laughs> right here yeah. right yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it, it just yeah but uh it healed up pretty good man i appreciate everybody's prayers and well wishes cuz uh it's you know it didn't oh, it get is. infected right it didn't get like i didn't get an infection yeah that's good so right? when you oh. when you drew up the on the video on kind of how things got separated there that was the point where i shut the video off <laughs> like oh, yeah. good 
I've, I yeah, got, I, I think can't, I put I a little warning in there. But, yeah, you did, uh, and I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm like, ah, I gotta stop. <laughs> I've seen worse. I've seen worse than that. Well, I've, that I've, I watched it I've all the way. I've done worse to myself, but it's funny you should mention that because a week or when I was painting the the backdrop here, I did the exact same thing with the paintbrush, and it flipped right around on my finger. And for some odd reason, if it would have been an exacto knife, it would have had a similar yeah. a similar wound to what you had. But huh. Always Amazing. pays to be careful, you know. I was yeah. fortunate in the industry. Like, I milled thousands of board feet, two Olfa knives as a sculptor. Never once. I think I drove a Brad Nell through one of my fingers, but it was no big deal. I just pulled mm -hmm. it out with pliers. It was a, <laughs> like, it wasn't really, right? It was through through, through the finger of the end here, but I yeah, managed yeah. to pull it out and it was fine. But I never cut myself seriously. Like, that was probably the worst cut I've ever had in my life, like, on my finger from a hobby knife. Yeah, oh, man, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But you know, well, it's a good, it's a good wake up call, right? Yeah, for sure. Taking for things sure. for granted, but anyway. So we're we're on our our normal three hour tour this yeah, evening. Yeah, what a so, run! Eh? Yeah, it was a pretty good run. Um, we'll give hours, we'll give yeah, yeah, geez, it's we're getting up there. Um, we'll give the the folks out in the chat one last uh, go around for yeah. questions for Boomer, and then uh, Mike. Um, any any closing thoughts here this evening on the show, um, Boomer, or anything that we've discussed here this evening? I no, Boomer. Just thank you very much for coming on and and oh, yeah. teaching us all. You know, thank you for the content that you put out. Um, you know, it's it's uh, I've I personally have learned a ton from watching your stuff, and uh, you know, I know. I know I have a lot more to learn and I don't just watch something one time through and I've watched some of your stuff three, four, five, six, a dozen times because this doesn't exactly click and I'll, you know, every time, but it's, it's, uh, just thank you very much. It is it, it, just such a, such You're a welcome, pleasure. Mike. Thank you. I gotta go back to Mike and refresh my memory. <laughs> I gotta go back. I forgot how I did something. So now I can go back and watch my own and say, oh right, okay. That's that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. No, I appreciate that, Mike. Thank you. That's, that's yeah, no, yeah. no problem. And and I'll 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 echo a lot of uh, Mike's comments myself. Um it's you, you talked about social media um kind of having a, a different uh, I guess, you know, back in the day, I, you know, when I was growing up, I, I had a modeling mentor. He was a shipbuilder. He lived right here in town. Right. Oh, yeah. And now, and I learned a, a tremendous amount from him. And now I'm able to, to learn from folks like yourself that are, you know, across a continent and, right. and it's, where do you guys live it, again? Sorry. Like, like, so, so I live, I live in, in Ripon, Wisconsin and, okay, and Mike, Wisconsin, yeah. yeah and Mike, I'm about an hour and 10 minutes Northeast of him in green Bay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Neat. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's but, cool. Yeah. Just to, I guess to, to finish that it's, it's interesting yeah. how this is, and especially, you know, with the type of content that, you know, you Luke tone and, and, and others have put out of, helped me become a better, better modeler and helped me enjoy it um, far That's more than, when, than what I would ever have without it. So thank you there. Um, You're welcome. And, and you just seeing a bunch of the guys post the same things, right? Thanks for everything. And I, I think it's, it's, you're truly a, a great ambassador to, to the hobby and, and it's truly been a pleasure having you on. So I'm going to, I'm going to give, uh, Boomer, the mic here uh, before before we tie down for the night. Is there any last little s quips or stories that you want to leave us with before uh, we close up shop tonight? Well, I'm going to have to go back and watch this archive because I missed so many of the comments. Because yeah. you know, like a, trying to like a, you know, like if I read the comments, I'm not paying attention to you guys. I really want to hear. I actually like to hear more about your story too. You know, like you and Mike. Sure. You know. You know, I'd be open to getting together again sometime at your convenience to talk yeah. about something else. But absolutely, you know, I've, I'm always fascinated to hear other people's stories too, right? Because yeah. you know, it's uh, I'm just really thankful that I've had you know the opportunity to share, or I still do, and I have my health 
and uh, you know, want to share, you know, like I say, I want, you know, modelers to be better than me, you know, like I know that sounds weird, but I want them to take all the skills that I have and push your envelope yeah. and, and you excel and you, because that's the way it works, right? Like every, I mean, look at Luke Toan. I mean, the guy's only what, like 20, 30? like what's he, 30? Yeah. Man, that guy, you know, I mean, there's a talent for you, right? Right. You know, and, yeah, exactly. uh, he's sharing through, right? Like he works hard at his content too. Yep. And, uh, yep. you know, for me, like, I just want to pay forward what I know. And, uh, you know, I just consider myself just to be average in my own right compared to my peers, like the people that I trained under. The people that sure. I worked under were unbelievable master craftsmen, believe me. Like yeah. they forgot more than I know. But I'm really thankful for them. A lot of them have moved on now and passed on. But, you know, like they were a great inspiration to me. And they said the same thing to me. Like, just go for it. Just push the envelope. Yeah. Practice. Practice. Don't worry. Take risks. Hmm. Take risks, man. Cause that's where you really learn stuff. Try stuff like, like not on your Genesis two locomotive. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like try stuff on the side, right? Like that's what I do. I spray on paper all the time and I spill paint and I try to keep learning stuff. And you know, that's the name of the game, right? That's how you get better at it. You know, just take mm. in what as much as you can and it, but have fun though. Make sure you're having fun. Yeah, I think that's it. You know, I think so, that's it. Make sure yeah. you're having fun. Because I'm having fun. Believe me, I am. I'm having a lot of fun. And uh, it's a lot of fun talking with you guys and coming on to your podcast. And and I really wish and hope you do well. Like, I, I've been following your podcast. And, you know, you're almost at 1,000, eh? You almost got 1,000. You, yeah, you're, we're. You're not yeah. far. No, we're that's getting. Pretty, yeah, that's pretty good for a podcast, you know. Because podcasts were not like YouTube wasn't designed for podcasts. Did you know no, that? it wasn't. No, it's no. not. <laughs> no, it's not. It, it's and, right? and it's it, it's been an interesting ride, and it, this this year has exceeded my expectations, you know, tremendously. I know Mike and I talk about it a yeah. lot, and yeah. we're just you're so doing thankful. it the right way. You know, like you're really, you know, like um, I can tell. You know, like when I first watched, I thought, okay. I'm hooked. Like I want to, like, I like what's happening. No, no, no. I like what's happening here. Like, look at the comments that you got, you know, and the way yeah. you guys mix it up and stuff. And it's relatable. Your content is yeah. relatable. Right. Right. And that's good. So you got a good thing. So have fun with it. And just, you know. And we are, we are. Yeah. That's for sure. We're having a lot of fun with this. It's, 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 it's really funny because it all, Real quick, one of the things that's I, I ran over to Andy's house here uh, yeah, uh, the other day, so, Sunday, and I ran over there. And all of a sudden, we sat down and we're sitting in the chair. Okay, we should do this on the show. We should do this on the show. We should do this on the show. And I'm, sitting there, I'm looking at him like, you know, we're having Boomer on, right? <laughs> None of this is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I tell you what. It's, it's so – because we'll, he'll get an idea. He'll throw it out at me. I'll say, meh. And he'll, I'll throw it on an idea. He'll, he'll go, meh. And then all of a sudden, we'll throw out an the same idea at each other. We're like, okay, we're doing that. And that's the end. Of, there's, uh, we, we have an idea. It's all, everything's all up here right now, you know. And yeah. it's been so much fun for the most part. For we're the trying most to part. Be, for the most part, we're semi organized, but it's, <laughs> there it's, is, a, there is a means no, to the no, madness. It's fun, man. Like you don't yeah. want to rehearse too much, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, you know, yeah, you know, that's, right. You know, that's probably part of the reason, you know, when I do my, you know, the content that I do is I want to live feel that, like, I don't, like, do voiceovers. You notice that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I want you to be there at the bench. Yeah, like, it's a looking over my shoulder, and I try yeah. to structure it that way so it has a, a, a sort of live feel to it. So you don't want to over-rehearse things. You want to kind of, you know, be spontaneous and just, you know, be more natural, I think. And that's what I get from you guys. And that's really cool. That's yeah. really cool. Thank you. And keep yeah. it up, you guys. It, and it Andy, like with... Andy, too, uh, I've been watching your content. I've been going every now and again to take a visit and watch one of your videos on your channel. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's neat, man, what you're doing there. I really like your bench work, too. Yeah, I'll yeah. have to – I've I've expanded some of it. Uh, and yeah. it's – 
it's turning into it's turning into quite the model railroad. I'll have to yeah. I think I'll have to maybe put a few more videos out more more frequently than I do. Yeah, so. do an update walk around. I guess I gotta do one soon too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, deal. Deal. Yeah, sure, yeah. Look so, forward to getting together with you guys again sometime. Really I, enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely. We, we had a blast. I mean, if you look at the replay, I there's three hours of me just smiling. So um, if that's any <laughs> indication of how it went for me, it was it was very good. So yeah. um, I'll take us out tonight here. I do want to thank uh, Boomer again for coming on. It's been it was a fantastic show this evening. We covered so much stuff unbelievable and again thank you thank you thank you and thank you to the section crew out in the chat tonight um it was it was fantastic the comments the engagement and all of the interactions that go on behind the scenes that i don't get to see it's a very nice community that we have going on here and speaking of which if you want to follow us um feel free to subscribe uh, click the subscribe uh, icon here on YouTube. Or if you like other social media platforms, we're also out on Facebook. And you can catch us out on the Second Section Podcast in Facebook. We also have a website with all of our links out there, secondsectionpodcast.com. And you can catch us on any of the major platforms in Audio Land as well, Spotify, iTunes, all that good stuff. We're out there. So you feel free to get a hold of us and well, we just love to have you listen along. So I just published the short line local just in closing. So I think this is a I think this is a perfect way to take us out. This is perfect. Okay. Make no. sure you make sure you head over to Boomer Diorama's channel. If you're already not a subscriber to him, please do subscribe. It helps him, helps us, helps everybody in the community. Right. Check out the latest and, video we talked about it this evening. It's gonna Andy, be cool. Yeah. Andy. Yeah. Boomer. How do you yeah. always end most of your most the majority of your videos? How do you end them? Uh, take care, happy modeling. Have a good day, and we'll see you soon. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> Bye.